Bowling by so the pushing there you can see the bowling analysis and two wickets each for Naren Vatta, Sher Malla and Narayan Josi. Eman Dhami also doing well with the ball. 26 runs conceded for one wicket. Naren South got one as well for his 31 run. Basant Khatri, the only one missing out on any wicket. No wickets for him in his three overs. Naren Vatta was the talking point when he bowled that 17 overs and picked up two wickets in the same over. There is the partnership, not many, a big one for second, third, was were dismissed cheaply and then 25 runs for the fourth wicket and it was sixth wicket partnership who helped, which helped Gandaki province to post this total 117 runs, 30 runs added between Roshan Gautam and captain Bipin Khatri. So that's the story at uh, Point International Mold Pioneer Cricket Ground, Gandagi Province. They made 117 before they were all out in 18.3 overs, which means that you can see the highlights. I think that one towards the cover region and the ball finding the bound the boundary. Though there was a desperate attempt to stop the ball, but the ball rushes towards the fence. These are some of the boundaries. A oh, fantastic catch.
Abhishek Pal and experience Raju Rizal opening the batting for Sudhir Basim, whereas it will be a captain Bipin Khatri bowling the first over and first runs as well for Abhishek Pal. He looked so good in yesterday's match. We'll have to do once again if they want to grab the first point of the tournament. Not a big target they are chasing. Just 118 runs is the target. So welcome back once again dear viewers. So Sudhir Pashim province they are now at the moment chasing the target. 118 runs to win 117 118 runs to win the game. They made 143 runs against Karnali in yesterday's game, but they lost the game. Abhishek Pal was the chief contributor for them. He made 51 runs. And once again he has come as an opener for the side this time onto the back foot and pulling it away. But there's a protection, just a single run. The short of length ball, enough time for Abhishek Pal to go onto the back foot and with the horizontal bat pulling it away and picking up a single run. So for Gandhiki province it will be very important for them. They have to take wickets at regular intervals to derail the innings of Sudhir Pashim. That's the only way they can go on go on to win the game. Well Abhishek is coming after a big confidence. He scored a half century in the previous game against Karnali. 51 runs from 45 balls with 6 fours and 1 6. And that will, that couple of runs will close out the first over. Sudhir Pasim have managed to collect five runs from it. So Amrit Gurung will continue from the road end. High time medium pace bowler. So he has a responsibility on, on his shoulders. Picking up wickets. That's the only way they can go on to win the game. So the Pashim province, they have some good batters. And on strike, Abhishek Pal. Fresh from his wonderful knock of 51 runs in yesterday's game against Karnali. This time onto the backward, pulling it away towards the backward squad like region. That's the maximum easy picking for Abhishek Pal. The ball was short in line. Plenty of time for Abhishek Pal to wait for the delivery and with a horizontal bat, pulling it around and the ball sailing over the backward squad like region for the maximum. Obviously, continuing right from where he left yesterday, was into the body. Pulling it away for a fast maximum of the second inning. The ball was short in length. Enough time for the batter Abhishek Pal to wait for the delivery. Amit Guru not, not didn't bowl too quick a delivery. Easy picking for Abhishek, and he collected six runs. There is no slip, one short fine leg, one backward point, one third man, one extra short extra cover, mid off, mid down, mid wicket, and one a deep square leg region as well. So the game has held up for a while, waiting for the ball to be rescued back. And in fact, the bowler has well, it's going to be provided with another ball. So 
11 runs on the board for Sudhir Pashim. 117 is the target. They are going to win. As we said this morning, it's a very important game for Gandhi Province. They have to win this game. It's a do or die situation, let me tell you. This is their fourth game. They have just won a single game out of the three games they played. And each team getting six matches to play. They have to win this game to stay in contention for the qualification board in the grand finale. If they lose this game, then they will be almost out of this tournament apart from the other mathematical permutations which might come into play provided they win the remaining two games as well, as well after losing this game one, this one as well. Well, if they lose this game and even if they win the remaining two matches, they will have to depend on others' outcome. That is why a must win for them. But a difficult one, 117 runs is what they posted. Will be very difficult to defend that with a batting heavy Sudhir Pasim side. So only way they can go on to win the game is to take pick, pick, pick up wickets at regular intervals. They should be attacking at the moment, not to defend the total, but rather go all out and attack, try to capture wickets. That should be the strategy they should be applying in this match. Since they are not defending a big total, just 117 runs. There you can see a bird having its flight. A strong breeze going around the Mulpani cricket ground as well. It's been a hot day. Temperature around 28, 29 at the moment. Lovely piece of bowling going for a drive, missing it completely. Talking about the temperature. If you go to the, some of the, you know, Torai regions there, the temperature rise above 40 plus. How those people are, you know, living there. Long time back, I've been to Birganj. I took, three times I took bath just to cool off myself. I feel, I felt so hot. Well, and we just had a inter-province men's sport in, men's cricket in Bharatpur Chitwan. It was too hot there as well. And Gandagi province, they were the gold medal winners in that tournament, but not going well for them this time around. It's end of the second over. Sudhir Pasima 13 without losing any wickets. So nice breeze blowing across the ground there you can see the fluttering scene over there. So nice breeze at the ground. It's a bit of respite for the players on the ground. So spin attack has been brought on. And the boys Mipin Khatri, the captain, comes on to bowl. It's going to be a very interesting one how these two batters will negotiate. Mipin Khatri, the captain, fresh from the man the match award. So he is the man, he has a responsibility being the skipper of the side. This time, quicker delivery. The batters are through for a cheeky single. And nothing less risky to do for Sudhir Pasin because they're chasing a target. Even less, a runner ball could do a job for them. 118 is the target. 
they are off to a good start so far 15 runs is what they have on the board yeah they don't have to do anything special they just have to go about the business in the methodical ap approach go about ones and twos they don't have to hit too many boundaries they are not chasing a big target so they will not have that kind of pressure they will just have to play a normal game of cricket to reach the target And these two batters are taking their own time. They know very well what their target is. They know what their job is. They are not rushing with the innings this time, dancing down the track, trying to play towards the onside region. Didn't make proper connection. That's the end of the over. So three runs conceded by Captain Bipin Khatri. So they're pushing. They are now 16 runs on the board after the completion of three overs. So it's a run the ball situation for Sudhir Pashim. They require 102 runs and remaining 102 deliveries. And going to get province bowlers, they're looking forward to capture wicket. That's their main objective to stay in this game. They have to take wickets at regular intervals considering Sudhir Pashim, they have long batting lineup. So if they can pick up some couple of wickets in the first few within the power play this time, played it away towards the long on region for a single run. Well, Amrit Gurung is generating a good swing, a good hint of swing in this wicket for Amrit Gurung so far. Can be a risky one for Raju Rizal. He was trapped in front by Prakash Zaisi by the in-swinging Yorker in the previous game. It would be interesting to see. This time does well, just tapping the ball, taking a single. That was, that was a good call. Both the batters understanding each other very well, playing with a softer hand, playing the ball in front of the fielder and running for a cheeky single. So they are keeping the fielders engaged as well. Interesting, there is no slip fielder placed. This time he misses the fielder and the ball traveling to the extra cover bound origin for four runs. Sloppy fielding, it should have been stopped. The ball was in the slot and Abhishek Paul drawing that one firmly. And the ball traveling towards the extra cover fielder where the fielder was stationed, but he could not stop the ball. And the ball travels to the fence for four runs. Between the legs of the fielder, this shot of fielding will not help. Gandaki province, especially when the team is defending a very low score, you need to be energetic, you need to be threatening when the team are taking those singles, but instead, fielders are showing those clumsy work in the field. Seven runs already coming from Amrit Guru's sec Gurung second over. You are absolutely right. The fielders have to be on spot on, they have to be energetic, they have to make sure that runs are not given away easily. They should make the batters you know, work hard to collect runs, but this is not happening here at the moment. And this time playing the ball, this time the ball going towards the cover fielder region, but the fielder could not stop, stop the ball cleanly. Though the batters were trying to go for a run, they changed their mind. A lovely piece of bowling, playing a walking drive, missing it completely, the ball zipping past the batter, 
So that's the end of the hours. So four hours have been bowled. So they'll push him there now. 23 runs on the board without losing a wicket. So another bowling change here. Subhash Bhandari comes on to bowl now. His bowling best bowling figures, two for 24 in this tournament. Measly played it away towards the squad equation for a single run. Gundaki bowlers, they are desperately looking for a breakthrough here. But uh, Sudhir Pashim batters, both his batters are Abhishek Pal and Raju Rujal. Playing confidently, not showing any kind of urgency, they are taking their own time. Whereas here the Gundaki bowlers trying to pick up a wicket, haven't been able to put up any sort of you know impression on the so the Pashim batters. No risk taking at all from Sudhir Pashim batter, and they don't need to do so as well. But as I was saying, no risk taking. Abhishek Pal tries to go big towards that long on reason. Not well connected. Still good enough to take two runs. Playing the ball officially in the gaps and picked up a couple of runs. Subhas Bhandar is very clever. Usually turns away from the right-handed batter and just sometimes just quickly turning it in that can confuse the batter that is how he picks up most of his wickets there's a slow tweaker you need to have variation in his bowling again if we can bowl dusra then definitely he can impress this time bang it away towards extra cover origin for four runs this time came down the track made that ball fuller was easy for Abhishek Pal to hit, generated more power and quickly ran away towards the extra cover region for a four. We can see that in the replay as well. And that is the end of the first over from Subhas Bhandari. Seven runs coming from that. After five, Sudhir Pasim at 30 without losing any wicket. So seven runs coming in the previous over, bowled by Subhash Bhandari. Bringing the ball in by after pitching the off stump, but easily played it away towards the cover region and picked up a single run. Amrit Gurung bowling in his third over into his third over. He has been a bit expensive. This time playing the ball officially 
towards the side screen region for a single run, though it was a safe shot playing straight over the bowler's head towards the side screen and picked up a single run. Well, currently Sudhir Basim batters, they are batting at the current run rate of 6.00 and still the required run rate is lower than 6. That is what, that is the reason they are they don't need to take any risk in this game. Mm -hmm. Amrit Gurung coming back for his third over. Ball so wide this time around. He's getting a good amount of swing, but both the opening batters, they are dealing it well at the moment. Far outside the Austin. When bowling wide, wills, wide balls will not do good for your team. Dear friend Amrit Gurung, you have to bowl in the right areas. Bowling white balls, no balls will make the things easier for your opposition side. So, a couple of wides already in his over from Amrit Gurung. And both his batters are having a relaxing batting display at the moment, not taking on any undue risks. They know very well. So they are just, you know, going about the business in a normal way. I think that, sh that must be the instruction from the captain as well. You don't have to rush for the things. The target we are chasing is not a big one. You just have to stay there and play normal game of cricket and runs will follow easily. And once again, a single run taken. Abhishek Pal and Raju Rujal, the two opening pair for Sudhir Pashim. They have already stitched 25 runs partnership for the first wicket. It's a good start by Sudhir Pashim. After losing game against Karnali in province in the previous match, in this match they have performed superbly while bowling restricting Gandhika province to just 117 runs and now they're at the moment cruising along I would say 35 runs on the board without losing a wicket and we haven't seen the bowling to be too threatening for them it seems it's easy bowling for them didn't find any problem whatsoever dealing the bowlers this time played it away of another single exactly no real chance created in the whole power play and that concludes the power play the first power play as well Sudhir Pasima 36 without none after six Subhas Bhandari will ball the first over after the power play. The field is a bit widespread. It will be easy for the batters to rotate the strike to take those singles and doubles. Long on and long off are in the place. There is a cow corner. Kamal Pari are surveilling that area. There's deep cover and there's deep square leg as well. Gully in place, short third man, extra cover and also fine leg up in the circle. That is the field placement set for Abhishek Pal and just punches of the back foot towards the long on region for a single. Now easy picking. Five runs on the boundary region so easy run for the batters. 
Now a fielder has been kept at short mid-wicket region to restrict the batters from taking cheeky singles. Gundagi will have to, you know, stop pluck the runs being taken by these two batters. They just can't afford to give away too many easy runs uh, to Sudhir Pashim. They should try some sort of strategy whereby they should, shouldn't allow the batters taking easy singles. They have to bring some close in fielders. Well, I was talking about the field that needs need to be threatening while defending a low target and was a chance for a run out, but a fielder fumbling there, allowing the batter to complete a single run. Looking for two runs this time, a very quick running between the wicket. Good communication between Abhishek Pal and Raju Rizal. Playing in the gaps and scampering for a couple of runs. Playing the ball in the, in the gaps. There was no fielder. And picked up two easy runs. Still, we don't see any you know, closing fielders to stop the single. There you can see a lot of gaps towards the onside region. The only fielder inside the circle in leg side that is in fine leg. Clear gap, a complete gap in the leg side. Easy to take single there, but that might be according to the bowler's plan. Is bowling round the wicket against the right hander. Could be turning it away. That might be the plan. No, he's targeting the stump. And a single taken once again. The bowler should be thinking how to take a wicket, not to defend the run. At a time when your team is defending low total, it becomes very important for the bowlers to, you know, be aggressive, pick up wickets. They shouldn't be afraid, you know, to bowl some flighty deliveries and invite the bowlers, batters to have a go at him. And while doing so, you can pick up wickets as well. But here you can see they are having totally defensive type of mentality. So that's the end of the over. So seven overs gone. It's now 41 runs on the board for Sudhir Pashim without losing a wicket. So we see another bowling change here. Kamal Pariyar has been brought on, left arm spin bowler. He'll be bowling from the road end. Now, Captain Bipin Khatri has given him the responsibility of providing breakthrough. There you can see Captain having conversation with his bowler with regard to the fielding positions. One at gully, one at backward point, deep extra cover, long off, long on, deep mid wicket. Deep square leg onto the backward plate the way towards a deep backward square leg region and the batters will take two easy runs. So runs are still flowing easily for Sudhir Pashim in this match. Kamal Pariya, a good tournament for him so far, the left-handed spinner. Five wickets for him in the previous three matches. It's the fourth match Gandaki is playing. This time drops a shorter and once again it's a boundary. Came after a long time but came at a good time as well. Lose there from Kamal Pariya. Plenty of time for Abhishek Pal to rock onto the back foot and pull it away. Collecting four runs, no chance for the deep mid wicket fielder. You can see in the action replay, short of length ball. Easy picking for Abhishek, wax it away. Collecting four runs. Once again, short of length delivery, pulled it away. But this time, there was a fielder, so just a single run. 
ड्रॉपिंग टू शॉर्ट कमलपुर यार अभिषेक पाल स्लोली लीडिंग इज साइड टूअर्ड्स दैट टारगेट थर्टी फोर रन ऑलरेडी फ्रॉम इज बैट सो ही इज कंटिन्यूंग इज गुड फॉर्म फिफ्टी वन रन ही स्कोर इन येस्टरडेज गेम अगेंस्ट कर्णाली एंड वंस अगेन इन टूडेज मैच ऑल्सो कमिंग गुड एट द मोमेंट इज बैटिंग वन थर्टी फोर रन कमिंग ऑफ जस्ट ट्वेंटी एट डिलीवरीज सो ही हेज डन द हार्ड वर्क ही हेज got the start now he needs to make it that he he turns it into a big one this time once again short of land delivery pulled it away was this time around kamal pariya bowling two short deliveries i think he's having some problem while pitching the ball his land hasn't been a good good, good one easy picking for abhishek pal and what a good over this has been for sudhir pasim oh once again a boundary is it No fielder does well with his legs. Good footwork there at the deep backward square leg. Two runs to end the over, over probably. Yes, it is a good over for Sudhir Pasim. Eleven runs coming from Kamal's fast over. Sudhir Pasim, fifty-two runs partnership. The fifty-two runs partnership for opening pair. After eight, they are fifty-two for none. so very productive over last over kamal bhari are conceding 11 runs and in the process sudhir pashim complete 52 runs on the board after the completion of eight was without losing a wicket raju rujal batting on 15 and abhishek pal batting on 35 runs of the two abhishek pal has been doing the bulk of scoring Still, Gandaki Promis they are looking for a breakthrough in this match. There you can see skipper Bipin Khatri with his bowler Arjun Kumal consulting with the bowler about the deployment of the fielders on the ground. Gali backward point, sweeper cover, short extra cover, long off, long on deep mid wicket, and one deep backward square leg. So four fielders within the 30-yard circle, three on the offside and one on the onside. So there is a big gap towards the onside region. If the batter can just knock the place the ball towards the mid on or mid wicket or square leg, they can just go for runs easily. This time, played the ball away towards the sweeper cover region just for a single run now. Sudhir Pashim, at the moment, in a very solid position, one one seven. The target they are chasing to win the game, one one eight. In fact, and they have done the pretty good job at the moment. Onto the back foot, pulling it away, just for a single run. So runs are coming fairly easily. No problem for these two batters. Runs coming easily. has hardened up and now it has become far more easier for the batters to play and this time he played pedal short and they are through for a cheeky single drifting down the leg side easy picking 
for Roger Rujal playing the ball away towards the backwards squad like region and scampering for a single run. Well, a strong breeze going around as well, so it will be hitting against the wind while bowling from that end, the golf golf court end. Just five singles from Arjun Kumal's first over. Sudurpasim Province are 57 for zero after nine. So Kamal Pariyar will continue his bowling. He was expensive in his first over, conceding 11 runs. He's into his second over. At the moment, so the Pashim province, they are in a very good, good position. Whereas for Gandaki province, they have to make sure, they have to pick wickets. That's the only way. They can put impression in this game this time onto the back for trying to pull it away. No time did. We have to wait for them pass signal. The ball running down towards the third minute region. That's a leg bar signal by Ampar. So one more run. Obviously, Pal trying to be cheeky this time around, trying to play with the field. There is no fielder protecting that fine leg region. This could be the plan to invite the batter to take them the risk to make the mistake but not that case the strike has been rotated and it's Raju Riza is struggling a bit in the middle 22 balls is what he has faced the 17 runs for him and interestingly no boundary from his bat whatsoever all the boundaries that have been scored in this inning have come from the bat of Abhishek Pal. But the praiseworthy job he has done is that he has, you know, lent good, su lent good support to his partner. His partner Abhishek Pal doing the bulk of scoring. He has been playing a second fiddle to his partner. And the batters are through for a couple of runs. So runs continue to flow easily here for Sudar Pashim. There you can see the wind is blowing across the ground, but the wind is not bl blowing behind the bowler. If it happens, then, then it will become easier for the bowler. But this is not happening at the moment. It's across the ground. So that's the end of the over. So 10 overs have been bowled. Sudar Pashim there now. 61 runs on the board without losing a wicket. And that's drinks break as well. So we take a short break and when we come back, we'll have the further innings of Sudhir Pashim after the drinks break. Keep watching Kastamanda television.
So you were watching the highlights of the batting display of Sudar Pashim. And now it's game resumes after the drinks break. Drifting down the leg side, Arjun Kumal is the bowler. That's a wide ball signaled by Empire Himal Raj Giri. Gundagi Pravin still looking for the breakthrough in this match. Haven't picked up a wicket. So the Pashim Pravin's these two batters have done a praiseworthy job. Accumulated 62 runs without being separated so far in 10. It was 6.2 runs they have maintained. And now it has become 6.3 runs. Now they require another 55 runs and 60 balls to win the game. Another wide ball. Arjun Kumal not being able to control his line. Once again, the ball pitching outside the Austin and going further away. Well, this time a better delivery outside the Austin. This is what happens when your team scores low total and when you go when you come on to bowl and your bowlers are not taking wickets then problem starts your strategy doesn't work any way you try to do this time played it away but there's a protection just a single run i think captain bipin khatri is running out of his ideas how to control the pace of this innings at the moment he is clueless what type of strategy he should be applying in this game to stop these two batters from taking runs easily without any problem whatsoever since his bowlers haven't been able to put up any sort of impression in this game. Well, five bowlers have been introduced so far. Sandeep Khatri can be the other option. But Bipin Khatri trusting the spinner and bringing on the part-time spinner. Arjun Kumar started with three consecutive wide. Oh, this time powerfully hit down the ground and will beat the boat long on and long off fielder. Bipin Khatri putting on a desperate dive there. But still was unable to stop that because it was very powerfully struck from the bat of Abhishek Pal. We can see that in the replay. No chance for either of the fielders. It was struck beautifully straight down the track. No chance for both the fielders and the ball races away towards the fence for a wonderful boundary coming from the bat of Abhishek Pal. This time once again playing the ball, beating the fielder at cover region. But there's a back of fielder, just a single run. Gundagi Province will have to do a lot of thing, a lot of you know thinking and doing in terms of improving the bowling quality, the batting quality in the, in the upcoming matches. So that's the end of the over. 11 overs have been bowled. So they're pushing, they are now 70 runs on the board without losing a wicket. So now, captain once again making his appearance, coming on to bowl his third over. He has been impressive in his bowling, didn't concede too many runs. So now he comes on to bowl to provide breakthrough for his side. 
And this time onto the backward bangs it away and the ball traveling to the deep extra cover region. There you can see the field of fumbling and the batters are through for a couple of runs. Shortening the length, easy picking for Abhishek Pal. Played it away easily towards the deep extra cover region and picked up a couple of runs. So now he is moving on to his what could be another half century in these innings. Fifty balls remaining, forty-five runs required to win the game. So Abhishek Pal very much on the verge of another half century. Fresh from his fifty-one runs he scored in the previous game. He's batting on 48, but at the moment at the non strikers end. Well, Bipin Katri coming back in search of a wicket, not getting it, concedes three runs, a clinical over nonetheless, but that will not do. They desperately need a wicket. They need continuous wicket because 45 runs is what Sudhir Pashim required after the end of 12 overs. They are 73 runs without losing any wicket. So Kamal Pariyar comes on to bowl now. On strike, we have Abhishek Paul batting on 48 runs, coming off 43 deliveries. The best thing about these two batters of Sudhir Pashim province, they didn't try to play too many fancy shots. They waited for the balls and play according to the merit of the ball and whenever they got the opportunity of hitting boundaries they did so that has been the feature of these two batters and then the Bishik Pal is the one who is doing the maximum scoring for the team whereas Raju Rijal is playing a second fiddle to Abhishek Pal this time playing the ball towards the long on region just for a single run Now he moves on to 49 runs, Abhishek Pal, but he will have to wait for a while since his partner Raju Rijal is on strike now. Oh, chance of a run out. So here, finally, wicket has gone down. Sudhir Pashim losing the first wicket. You can see in action replay. Backing up for a run, playing the ball towards the cover region. There you can see. Oh, he slipped, slipped down. Yeah. In the middle. And it is obviously Pal will have to walk back. Means he will not be able to score a back to back half, half century. Was looking so good in the middle. Has been dismissed for 49. How heartbreaking that is for Abhishek. Nonetheless, he has played so well, has put his side in the winning position. I think he became a little bit impatient. He shouldn't have gone for the run. There were, the run was non existent, but still he wanted to go. And when he, want, and when he tried to come back, you know, he slipped and he was too late. And the bowler. 
collecting the ball and whipping off the bells. So the way he was batting, Abhishek, this was the only way he could have got out. So run out, and this this is one of the you know very heartbreaking ways of getting run out in the while you are batting. Exactly, was on the verge of scoring a back-to-back -back half century. No one has done that so far in the tournament. We are in the ninth game of Peer Ganesh Man Singh National T20 Championship. So many half centuries scored in this tournament. Only one century from the bat of Asutos Giraya. And no five wicket hauls as well so far in the tournament. Hopefully, we will see in the coming matches. That's the end of the over as well. So 13 overs have been bowled. So the Rupashim, they are now 74 runs for the loss of one wicket. Bipin Khatri once again will continue after that breakthrough over for Kandaki Province. Now the required run rate has gone up the 6 run per over mark. A quick wickets can do a job for Kandaki Province from here on. They have to ball exceptionally well. To bring about miracles in this match, only miracle, miraculous bowling can you know ensure victory for Gandhi Province. So under the back foot, played it away towards the square leg region. Only miraculous performance bowling by Gandhi Province can make impression in this game. Since. Sudur Pashim, they are in the driver's seat at the moment. 76 runs, they have already accumulated. 118 is the target. They have just lo lost a wicket there. You can see 40 balls remaining, 42 runs required. Nine wickets in hand. And miracles do happen in the cricket grounds, don't they? And as being a Nepalese cricket fan, we're very familiar with those situations. But now, Kandagi Province, if they want to grab the fourth point in the tournament. They will need to do similar in the field. Honestly speaking, it, it will be too much of asking for from them in this particular situation. So the Pashim, they are now 78 runs on the board. They have lost just a wicket. Also time for Raju Rizal to step up now. Has played so many deliveries, 33 balls, scored 20 runs, strike rate of 60. Was good until Abhishek Pal because he was supporting him so well. But after losing him, he need to be step up as well. Given the situation, I don't think so. He is going to show any kind of urgency because not too many runs required to win the game. This time, played it away. There you can see Frida chasing out for the ball, and the ball will find the boundary towards the deep backward point region. Playing late once again, Sudhir Pasim batter waited for that to come, was turning away from the left hander as well. Look at that in the replay, we can see. In fact, this is the last ball of the over that closes out the spell of Bipin Khatri. No wicket for him today. 
did wonder in the previous game four wickets conceding just five runs but this time consists 20 from four and no wicket for him after 14 Sudhir Pasima 83 for the loss of one wicket and they still need 35 runs from last six overs So Subhash Bhandari comes on to bowl right arm round the wicket to left hander Basant Karki. It's a run the ball situation for Sudhir Pashim to win the game. This time going for a big shot but not timing it. There you can see a big smile on the face of Subhash Bhandari. Was a quicker delivery. Basan Khan going for a big shot, missing it completely, not timing it properly. This time he manages, and the ball sails over the mid wicket boundary region for the maximum. Subhas Bhandari coming back into the attack in search of wicket, but it's the other way around. Basan Karki welcoming him with the maximum. The ball was in the slot, easy picking for him. And he, there you can see, whacked it away. And the ball clearly sailing over the mid wicket bound region for the maximum. There you can see the billboard. And the ball just falling behind that billboard for the maximum six runs. Well, it's time for Sudhir Pasim batters to play a big shot as well. Having lost the previous game, they need to maintain their run rate. They're not chasing a big total. Just 118 runs is what they needed and at the moment they are just 29 runs away. Haven't lost many wickets, just one down. So they have the license to do. Captain Bipin Khatri and Tenson there. So time for a bit of swinging from Sudhrupa Simbatter. We'll take some time to find that ball and players will take a drink break as well that was a huge six that's the area where the ball has disappeared behind that jasmine parents billboard now since they could not rescue back that ball or empire has the reserve empire has brought a new ball a used ball so the player can so the match can continue without any interruptions as you said current rate will play very important part later on towards the fag end of this tournament in the event teams you know finishing with equal number of points so the Pashim they would certainly like to finish off the game as quickly as possible by hitting some big shots not to play complete 20 overs but finish off the game playing some like let's say 17 18 overs so they can improve upon their net run rate as well well they lost the game in 18.4 overs against Karnali yesterday so we'll have to maintain that as well. They have to think about that. And that single closes out the over number three from Subhas Vandari. Sudhir Pasim, they are 90 for one after 15 overs.
Kamal Padia will continue his bowling. Thirty balls remaining, twenty eight runs required to win the game for Sudur Pashim. Well, the chance of a run out there was a loud shout, but no approval from the square leg umpire Himal Razgiri. There will be two more runs in Sudur Pasim's account. We can see that in the replay as well. It was a tight running. Basant Kargi was in the danger and oh, that was a quick work from the glove man, Deepak Dumre there. But he's still not being able to get the second breakthrough for his side. So it was a close call, but somehow the batters reaching on time. So 92 runs on the board and next match coming up in the afternoon time between Lumbini washes Koshi and on to the back foot. Played it away towards the mid-wicket region just for a single. So now the players are just going through the emotions. So the Pashim very much on the verge of winning this game. 93 runs already on the board. Just a wicket they have lost. So definitely Gandhi Province will have to do a lot of thinking. One step forward, bangs it away. Uh, towards the long region, one bounce, one more run. So now they can see Raja Rujal showing a bit of urgency. He wants to finish off the game as quickly as possible. Exactly, that was what we were talking about. They need to show some urgency. They have run rate to maintain as well. Win is important, but run rate that will definitely come into the play in the later half of the tournament, especially. They lost against Karnali in the first match. Played it away towards long on region just for a single run. But if you see the pace of Sudhir Pashim province innings, they never thought about you know going, you know, for thought about you know showing urgency in terms of chasing down a target. They just maintained that methodical approach. If you see the starting innings. They maintain five runs, six runs in every over, most of the overs, which clearly show, shows that they are not looking to improve upon their road run rate. Rather, they're looking to win the game in a methodic by with a methodical approach. So that's the end of the over. 16 overs have been bored. It's now 95 runs on the board, losing just a wicket. Well, Subhas Pandari comes for his last over of the day. Let's consider 19 from that. We'll be bowling against the left handed Bosantakarki. Bowling around the wicket against the left handed batter. time plays over the long one reason oh what a great work there done by the fielder there big man Sandeep Khatri protecting that area puts on a jumping dive could have easily been a boundary but not today sir says Sandeep Khatri and they just took a single in that 
the required run rate once again has gone to 6 runs per over, 22 runs required from 22 balls. Raju Rizal this time swinging it towards the deep square leg Rizal, another single. They are only dealing with the singles at the moment, Sanjeev. Yeah, though they are trying to hit big shots, but they are not collecting it properly. They hit their shots turning into ones and twos, though they are trying to you know, finish off the game by hitting some big shots. So 97 runs on the board now, Sudhir Pashim. This time outside the Ostrom, a good feeling there, fumbling, tumbling, stopping the ball at the backward point region, just a single run. So 97 runs on the board now, another 20 runs required in remaining 20 ball, balls for Sudhir Pashim province and have two points under their belt in the second game after losing the first game against Karnali yesterday. Today their performance has been clinical while bowling and now in batting also. There has been an impressive performance by Sudhir Pashim province in this match. This time played it away. But there's a protection. Oh, misfield and the ball will find a boundary and that brings up 100 runs as well for Sudhir Pashim. Well, earlier we saw Sandeep Khatri there diving to stop the ball, stop the boundary. In fact, this time slipped and gave away a boundary. We can see that in the replay as well. Dropped a bit shorter. Basant Karki waiting and smacking that towards the long on region look at that Sandeep Khatri slipping and then letting it go for a boundary that ends the over number 17 eight runs came from Subhas Bhandari's last over Sudhir Pasim they are 103 for one requiring 15 more runs Well, there is the bowler number 6 introduced. It will be Sandeep Khatri bowling in the death over. In the tricky situation, he was so good in the previous game while bowling at the death overs. Will now re need to repeat that feat. Not much runs required. 15 runs is what Sudhir Pasim need to get from 18 balls. Short keeper. And a quick single taken. Raju Rizal once again waiting the ball to come. Just tapping it from the back foot. And giving a strike to Basant Karki. So Sandeep Khatri is a new bowler now. So Gandhaki Province they are utilizing all the bowlers they have in their disposal. 104 runs on the board now. Just another 14 runs required to win the game. And 17 balls remaining. It shouldn't be a big problem for Sudhir Pashim. So Basant Karki is on strike now. And playing up Ashley. And the ball will find the boundary ball running towards a deep backward point boundary region for four runs. So now he wants to finish off the game as quickly as possible. Played it away easily, picked up four runs with offered outside the Ostrom. Easy picking for Basant Karki. Played it away beautifully towards the backward point region and collecting four runs.
So the Pashim province they had a very solid opening partnership which really laid the strong foundation for the teams for the team's chase in this match. This time onto the back foot, pulled it away, just a single run. So this is what happens when your openers do the job. They provide good start, they give you a strong, you know, solid start, good foundation. Then it batting becomes easier for the later on later on batters. This is what happened in this match at the moment. Sudhir Pashim, they are in the driver's seat, cruising along towards the victory target of one one returns to win the game. Well, could have done better Sudhirbhas in province with the batting they have already 17.5 overs balled in this match yesterday they lost the game in 18.4 overs it will be interesting to see can they finish before that as the result swinging wildly now enough is enough Says Razu Rizal struggling in the middle so far, not going for a boundary, hasn't scored any boundary in his 39 ball knock in a T20 match. Well, that's the end of the over number 18. Sudhir Pasim, they just need 9 runs from 12 balls. Amrit Gurung is back to ball the penalty mid over. Just nine runs is what they need, Sudhir Pasim. Twelve balls remaining, nine runs required to win the game. What if this bowler bowls a mid in the over or concedes just a couple of runs? This time onto the back foot, pull it away. Well, there's a freedom and the batters are through for a couple of runs. Well, seven more now. Surely, Sudhir Basin, they are not losing. Eleven balls is what they have got to score those remaining runs. Strong breeze going around. Tries to go big once again, Basant Karki. Missing out on that. Amrit Gurung slightly pulled the length back. He needs to bowl some more dot balls and picked up a wicket as well. Then the situation will become very interesting, you know. Well, an interesting inning from Raju Rizal here as well. In a T20 match, you have already played 39 balls. And you haven't scored a single boundary yet. 24 runs is what opener Raju has got. Just a single run taken. So nine balls remaining, six runs required to win the game. If this match can go till the last over, let's say situation. If it happens like a situation, you require a lose a couple of wickets, then you never know what might happen. Cricket is a funny game. And we were talking about the medicals, miracles happen, miracle might happen. But pretty difficult here. And Bipin Khatri is still defensive in field. I think it's time to pull your fielders inside the circle to restrict those singles. 
that have been leaking and tell your bowler to ball your length as well because Amrit Gurung is capable of bowling that so it will be interesting to see how he bowls the remaining three deliveries if he can then you know, concede just a couple of runs and, you know, and picked up a wicket as well then something then certainly this game will open up well, this time just clipping down the leg side no deep fine leg and much important boundary has been given from the bat so will be a fast boundary for Raju Rizal in the 40th ball we can see that in the replay as well drifting down like side, easy picking for him and played it away glancing it away for four runs so that's, that will settle the issue for so that push him now they just require two runs to win the game in the remaining eight deliveries well, and those well, those shots are always easy, especially when there is no defined leg in place. And that is a gift to someone like Raju Rizal, who struggle a lot in the middle. This time goes inside out. Will find the fielder and has been dropped. It's Arjun Kumar, the star boy, feeling at the extra cover. In fact, a cover. And the score, it is leveled as well. There was a chance of a catch, but dropped it. And the uh, score is level now. Just one run required to win the game for Sudhir Pashim to win in this match. Though they took a long time, you know, to reach the target. I guess they should have, you know, finished off the game by the 14th or 15th. It was considering the net run rate scenario, which might crop up in the later stage of the tournament. Even 16 or 17 would have been better, but they've taken till the last over now. All the fielders were inside the circle and Basanta Karki manages to play over those fielders. And that is the winning run for Sudhir Pasib, their first win in the tournament. Yesterday, they faced a defeat against Karnali while chasing. And now, they come up victorious while chasing against Gandagi Provians. It will be difficult for Gandagi Provians to march on. To the final of the tournament, having lost three matches already. And that is the batting scorecard. Abhishek Pal doing so well, missed out by just one to his back to back half century. Scored 49 runs, played 46 balls. And Razu Rizal batting till the end, scored 29 runs from 41 balls, just one boundary to his name. And it was Basant Karki who scored those winning runs. 37 runs is what he scored. And Sudhir Pasim winning by 9 wickets with just 1 over to spare. There you can see the bowling analysis of Gandaki. Not impressive one. They tried out 6 bowlers but none of the bowlers could put up an impression as the so the Pashim batters just went about their business in the methodical approach. They didn't take too many risks and they played about the game in a normal way and they finally finished off the game. So that's the story that in the fifth day of the first edition of Bir Ganesh Man Singh National Cricket T Cricket Tournament. And there's the match summary of the first match of the fifth day. Gandaki being invited to bat first, were bowled out for just 117 in the 18.3 overs. Sudhir Pasim Baller doing so well. Narayan Joshi and Sher Malla, also Naren Vat picking up two wickets each. Bibin Khatri was the top scorer for Gandaki with 13 runs. And in response, slowly and steadily, Sudhir Pasim reaching that target in the 19th over. Though they didn't lost so many wickets, just one wicket lost. That too was a run out. Abhishek Pal top scored with 49 runs. Basant Karki and Raju Rizal also scoring 37 and 29 runs respectively. So it's a comprehensive win for Sudhir Pashim winning by 9 wickets. So next match coming up shortly between Lumbini versus Koshi. But before that, we'll be having the post-match presentation shortly of this first match. And then you can enjoy the highlight of win Sudhir Pasim's first win in the tournament
Welcome to the post match presentation between the match of Sudurpashim Province and Gandaki Province. Beer Ganeshman Singh National T20 Championship Pratikita ko as a known din Gandaki Province. Poilo batting gare ko thiyo ra matra ek se sotra run mein sametiye ko thiyo. Ra zawafi batting ma utre ko Sudurpashim le thiyo zino lachche lai unnai sobara matra ek wicket gumaye ra pura gare ko thiyo ra no wicket ko jit hasil gana safal baaye ko thiyo. Raw post match presentation ma edi bela player of the match award pradan gani bela vaisa ke kuchha. Ramo match referee Samir Khan sala yahan nimte hona chaanju player of the match award pradan gana ko lagi. Raw aaj ko khel ko player of the match award huna safal huna vaye kuchha. Abhishek Paul for his 49 run knock. Also check for Abhishek. Thank you, sir. Thore Abhishek Sang Kurakani Pani Gana Chanchu. Abhishek, Toli Ko Lagi Jeet Ani Aafno Lagi Player of the Match. Kostu Sa Yoi Feeling Batai Dinus? Feeling obviously Ramro Bhaiyal Chai Na. Jeet Ma Contribute Gana Paayo. Ani Izo Pani Ramro Start Baathyo Tara Izo Tethi Khushi Lagi Thay Na Ki. Izo Rana Pani Ani Thay Tara Aza Jo Contribute Gare. Ani Tio Team Le Jeetio Tio Important Thay Tio 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 Khushi Lagi Chai. इजो पनी पचास रन बनाने वाले की थी ना आप सेंचुरी बनाने की थी आज अपनी नजीके उन्होंने दिया तेज को तरह रन आउट लेकर दाते इस बारे चुकने वो यो से फीलिंग कॉस्ट हो उनसा 49 में त्यों पनी रन आउट पितर की थी ना बाहर आये उसे था बाये 49 में आउट बाते बंदर इसे अली को थी नाराम लोग से लागे थे so that's all from the post-match presentation between the match of Sudurpasim province and Gandagi province. We will come up shortly with another exciting match. Till then, goodbye and keep watching Castor Mandap Gold.
हेलो एंड गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन सेकेंड मैच अफ द डे मैच नंबर टेन अफ वीर गणेश मान सिंह नेशनल टी ट्वेंटी चैंपियनशिप लुम्बिनी प्रोविन्स इज टेकिंग ऑन कोसी प्रोविन्स एंड इट्स टाइम फॉर द टॉस बोथ द कैप्टेन्स देव खनाल अफ लुम्बिनी प्रोविन्स एंड अंकित सुवेदी अफ कोसी प्रोविन्स आर इन द पिच साइड अलॉन्ग साइड मैच रेफरी समीर खान देव हेज द कोइन एंड विल स्पिन इट अंकित टस जित्न भएको छ के रोज्न चाहनुहुन्छ हामी फिल्डिङ पहिलो खेल हारेर आउनु भएको छ हैन पहिलो खेल अघिल्लो खेलमा हार्नु भयो जित्ने पोजिसनबाट हार्नु भएको छ र अब यो सेकेन्ड गेममा आउँदा चाहिँ कसरी आफूले प्लानिङ गरेर आउनु भएको छ अब खासै प्लान केही थिएन नि हिजो पनि अब हामी अब डोमिनेट गरिरहेको थियौँ होइन एटिन्थ ओभरसम्म सेभेन्टिन्थ ओभरसम्म होइन अब हामी पनि अब रिल्याक्स थियौँ क्या ड्रेसिङ रूममा पनि हिजो जितिहाल्यौँ होइन तर लास्टमा अब लास्टमा नसकिन्जेल केही पनि हुन्न होइन क्रिकेट त्यही हो अब लास्टमा हामीले पाँच विकेट हातमा हुँदा पनि अब बिस रन हान्न सकेन चार ओभरमा होइन त्यो त्यस्तै सानो मिस्टेक्सहरू अब आज ओभर कम गर्ने हो होइन त्यही हो हिजोको खेलबाट आज केही परिवर्तन गर्नुभएको छ आज एउटा चेन्ज छ होइन श्रवण किस्को कोठामा अनिल लामी छ नि हिन्छ गुड लक डू यू थ्याङ्क यू देव आफूले टस जित्नु भएको भए के रोज्नु हुन्थ्यो हामीले नि फिल्डिङ नै सोचिरहेको थियौँ तर त्यो अब हातमा नै हुँदैन होइन टस भन्ने कुरा सो जे छ अब इन ह्यान्ड त्यसलाई राम्रो गर्ने अहिलेसम्म टुर्नामेन्टमा गोइङ गुड होइन टप अफ द टेबल कसरी मोमेन्टम कसरी क्यारी गर्ने सोचिरहनु भएको छ त्यही हो होइन अब जसरी जुन वेमा स्टार्ट गरेर छौँ जुन वेमा खेलिरहेको छ म्याचर टिम त्यही कन्टिन्यू गर्ने होइन अनि त्यो मोमेन्टमलाई क्यारी अन गर्न सकेसम्म सो सबैजना राम्रो छ सबैजना पोजिटिभ छ त्यो कुरालाई लिएर सो लेट्स होप कि आज पनि एउटा राम्रो गेम हुन्छ हाम्रो लागि पछिल्लो खेलबाट केही चेन्ज गर्नुभएको छ टोलीमा कि सेम प्लेइङ इलेभेन नै रहनेछ हाम्रो सेम छ सेम छ गुड लक टू यू थ्याङ्क यू सो द न्यूज फ्रम द सेन्टर इज कोसी प्रोविन्स दे हेभ वन द टस एन्ड डिसाइडेड टू बल फर्स्ट
So there was a technical problem in terms of the audio. Now it has been rectified. So good afternoon once again to our viewers. Lumbini, they are now 44 runs on the board without losing a wicket. They are looking very good. The skipper batting on 28 runs. And in the company of Captain Vinal Gurung, it also seems to have, you know, drawn inspiration from him since he smacked the boundary in this over. All oh, lovely piece of bowling, appealing and given out. So the wicket number one goes down. Ankit Subedi strikes here with a wicket in his very first over, providing the breakthrough. Manal Gurung departs here, LBW of Ankit Subedi. Well, that was an expensive previous over. 21 runs came in from Sravan Yadav's over and Ankit Subedi. He brought himself into the attack, was smacked for a boundary in the first ball and this happened. A breakthrough for his side, Mrinal Gurung who was struggling in the middle has finally been dismissed. It was a terrific delivery and he was plumb in front of the wicket. Ball hitting his pads and he was in front of the wicket. Oh, there was appeal and Ambar didn't hesitate to raise his finger up. So Mrinal Gurung departs. 44 for one run, 44 one down in fact, the Koshi. Well, well, Narbadur Sarki is in the middle for number three. Is he in the middle for pinch hitting role? To boost up that run rate. Interesting call from Team Lumini here. So usually he bats down the order, but this time around he's been sent as a pinch hitter. So definitely he will try to hit some big shots. That's the job he has been assigned to, and that's the end of the over. Successful over from Ankit Sumidi. Picks up a wicket. Five was gone. It's 44 runs on the board for loss of one wicket, Lumbini Province. Forty-four for one is what Lumini has got after five overs. It was good for Kosi till the third over, but Sravan Yadav's second over, the, the fourth one of the the inning, twenty-one runs coming from that. But no ball did the damage. Boundary was scored in the ball and was later called as a no ball. Then in free hit. Dev Kanal smacking it over long off. After that, Ankit Subedi himself introducing and picking up the first wicket for his side. For now, it's Deepesh Kanal who has been introduced to ball the last over of the power play and has been welcomed by that beautiful inside-out shot from Dev Kanal. So the side continues in his own as well. Boundary coming from the back of captain Dev Kanal. Playing inside out shot there, you can see. He whacked it away over the top of the cover region. And the ball races away towards the fence. Since this is the last over of the power play, definitely Captain will try to some more ones. This time onto the back foot and the banks in the way. Back to back boundaries for him. Once again, same position, the ball driven away for four runs. Well, back to back boundaries is making it making a batting look so easy at the moment. Smacking everything. Coming at his way this time, moved across, waited for the ball to come and <coughs> cut it towards the extra cover reason. <coughs> what a shot that was. 16 ball, 36 now. Dev Kanal 
five boundaries already, two more, two big sixes. <coughs> Deepesh Kandel on pressure straight away. A slight adjustment in the field after being smacked for a couple of boundaries. So back to big boundaries for Captain Dev Khanal. This time whipped it away. And this time once again the ball will find the boundary. So had to go boundaries for Captain Dev Khanal. Deepesh Khanil at the moment having problems. Getting a lot of stick from Captain. This time onto the back. We played it away in the Waken region and the ball races away towards the fence. So three boundaries are the first three deliveries of Deepesh Khanil. Are we seeing the fastest half century of the tournament? Dev Khanal scored a 50 in previous match as well while chasing. Now moves to 41 from just 18 balls. 235 is his strike rate. So he's going great guns at the moment. 41 runs coming off just 18 deliveries with the help of a couple of big sixes and boundaries as well. Oh, going for a big shot and misses and another wicket goes down here. Narbadu Sarki playing, a, Sarki playing across the line. He could not do the job for which he was sent in. So Dipesh Kandel picks up a wicket. So wicket number two goes down for Lumbini. Well, that was just a gamble of Narbadur Sarki being sent at number three. He was trying to do his job, was swinging wildly, the ball dipping a bit low there and clipping the stumps. Look at that. No <laughs> eyes on the ball, only big swinging. Bit of bat also involved in that particular shot, going for a big shot. Played on. So Akash Tripathi walks in at the fall of second wicket for Lumbini province. There you can see the team members of Koshi hobbling around. Three boundaries and the wicket in is over. The pace is a bit expensive considering 13 runs but also picked up a wicket. Of Narbadu Sarki. Akash Tripathi, the new batter, the Chris now for the mini province. For him, there's one slip fielder. One at gully, one at point, one at short. Covers, extra cover, long off, mid on, deep mid wicket, and one at backward square leg. That's a fielding setup for Akash Tripathi. And he opens his account. Straight away playing the ball towards the Wadish Midon region and scooting away for a single run. And that's the end of the over as well. The so six was gone. Let me promise they are now 58 runs on the board, losing two wickets. So Lumbini Province 58 runs on the board losing two wickets and Keith Subidi once again he has picked up a wicket in his first over and there's a change in the voice and change in the comment box. Our colleague commentator Bipul Bhatrai is making his way at the comment box. Good afternoon Bipul and welcome to the comment box. Good afternoon to you Sanjeev and to all the viewers watching us home from Custom and the Sports SD as well as the digital channel of Birgan Isman Singh Foundation. This is the day number five of Birgan Isman Singh Cup National T20 Championship. We are in the match number two of the day and it's Lumbini Province under the captaincy of Dev Kanal taking on a young looking Koshi Province who lost to Bhagwati Province yesterday. 
and that loss might have affected them that loss might have hurt them sanjeev because the way they were in the, they were chasing in that game they needed just 20 odd runs there were still four wickets in hand and plenty of overs to go but then they ended up on the losing side they must have had a long team meeting back at the hotel and will probably look to bounce back today definitely i think it is owing to lack of experience that cost them match and definitely they must have learned from the mistake which they committed yesterday against bagmati from a winning position they went on to lose lose the game but definitely they will put a better performance in today's game and this time played it away towards the sweeper call origin just for a single run yeah talking about kosi province they are a very very young side if you see the squad of this team they are in a phase of transition you can clearly see that there are few names who have been part of the kosi province of the provincial team since a long time ankit suve the captain has been in the circuit for a long time now similarly susan thapalia he had a fantastic pm cup campaign couple of months back also made it to the nepal a side and then you have firdos ansari and mina stapa and apart from them there are very few players who have the experience of playing at this top level so this side they will take some time to gel up together but once they gel up together once they get into the group we can see more of improved performance from them but for now is the end of this seven overs lumini province they are 64 for 2 Seven overs done. Lumini Province. They are 64 for two. Kosi. They won the toss and elected to field first. Do you think it, it was a wise decision, Sanjeev? Given the fact that the track has looked almost a belter of a surface to score the runs, and the scoreboard pressure is always a thing in T20, especially while chasing. Yeah, even I was a bit surprised. I would if I if I would have been the captain, I would have batted first, put some runs on the board, and try to put pressure on the, the team when they come out. But they chose to you know field first at the moment. Miss field. in couple of runs Dev Kanal is playing nicely 44 of 20 lobs to bad aggressively has been seen as one of the future prospect for the Nepal national team in that middle order even can open the inning we have seen that plenty of enough time usually lobs to open the inning for his provincial side I have already made the national team debut played couple of ODIs batted in number 3 position Once again, a lapse in fielding, but thankfully, no harm done. Just a single there. And talking about Dev Kanal and his batting ability, he's he's some guy who is full of talent. He's full of potential, but at times he has looked vulnerable in converting his innings. He usually gets his start. He makes good-looking 20-30 run, but the problem in his batting in the recent time has been converting those 20-30s into a big score. And with the time and maturity, he will have to learn that as well. And this is a perfect opportunity for him. you are leading on your side this is a national level t20 championship that too in league format so you get to play six matches and the best thing about playing league format is that you get to learn and grow along with the matches definitely you have six matches to play so you learn from every game talking about never canal yeah at times he gets this time ball ballooning up and here he goes out He will be quite disappointed with himself this time. The bottom hand coming into play, playing that one officially easy catch taken at the cover region. So another wicket goes down here. The best Colonel gets the better of his under-19 skipper Dev Kanal. The under-19 left-arm spinner sends back his under-19 national team captain Dev Kanal, and there you can see on the action replay, no flight offered at all, flatter on trajectory. Dev was trying to push that ball from the front foot. ended up closing the face of the batter bit early there and a simple straight forward catch to the fielder at short cover they must believe it to themselves the way he got out after once again getting that start failing to convert is starting to a big score and lumini province they have lost their third wicket 68 for 3 
68 for 3 is what the scoreboard reads currently. 7.4 overs done. Lumbini Province. They were invited to bat first after they lost the toss. And Sunil Bandari is the new man in Sanjeev. And we are talking about Dev Kanal and his problem of converting his start into a beginning. And once again, the st story repeated. Definitely. I think he still hasn't learned from his previous mistakes. Once again, got getting a good start, getting out for 45 runs. So now, new batter Sunil Bandari walks in. 68 for 3 down for Lumbini Promise. Now it becomes very important the responsibility now on both the bat on the shoulders of these two batters. Now these two batters will have to put their heads down and build a partnership. That's very important. They need to put up substantial total on the board to challenge the batting line of Koshi as they also have some good batters. Apart from the many of them are youngsters. Akas Tripathi will have a big role to play here now. Experienced campaigner Akas Tripathi was also the part of Nepal under-19 team which played the under-19 cricket World Cup in South Africa. Another under-19 cricketer, Deepesh Kadel, right on the right there on your screen, balling this over, and it has been a good over from Deepesh. Just five runs conceded and a big, big wicket of Dev Kanal from that over. Eight overs done and the State Lumini Province there, 69 for three. We are in the fifth day of the tournament, Sanjeev, and we have already seen some close matches being played here. Because every team is and every team, all seven provincial teams, they are playing against each other. The case of each and every team, capable of beating each and every other team, has been rightly seen here. We saw Karnali province stunning Shudrabasim province yesterday in that exciting round chase. Similarly, Koshi province. They lost a match we could, which could have potentially been in their favour yesterday against Bagmati. So, two close matches yesterday, today. So, the Pasim province, they registered a simple chase against Gandagi province in the first match of the day. And Gandagi province getting better off, strong batting lineup of Madesh as well. They won the game against Madesh. That's the only win they have so far in this tournament in Gandagi. Oh, this time a big shout for LBW, but surely the ball was going down the leg stump, drifting down the leg stump. You can see there on your screen, there's a lot of breeze going through because of the geographical reason in which the Mulpani cricket ground is situated. As soon as the afternoon starts, you feel a lot of wind flowing through. It's also because of something related to the height. We are in a bit of heighty surface here. A lot of breeze flowing across Mulvani Cricket Stadium. And we have a lot of trees all around the place. Open space. So, 70 runs on the board now, Lumbini province. Interestingly, Ankit Subedi is bowling his third over here. When he came back, when he came for the first over, I thought he was trying to fill in the sixth baller spot. But now he has brought himself into third over. So, might be he is trying to fill up that fifth baller spot in between him and in between him and obviously Sharvan Yadav who was a bit expensive. However, Sharvan has also already balled two over means that Ankit and Sharvan in between have already balled out five overs after this ball. Will be an interesting to see how does he manages his resources because captaincy in T20 cricket can be a bit of a scratchy at times for the captains. They might have to think a lot, especially when it comes to the utilization of resources while bowling. That's end of over as well. So nine overs gone. Now 72 runs on the board, losing three wickets. Lumbini Province. Seventy-two for three after the end of ninth over. Ankit Subedi. He's been good with the ball today. 
interestingly bowled three overs of gentle off spin 15 runs conceded and a wicket taken in that lumbini province they are trying to rebuild their inning especially after losing the captain deep khanal couple of overs back now sunil vandari and akash tripathi will have a whole lot of responsibility you can notice on your screen that there is a strong breeze flowing towards the right side of your screen meaning that the off spinner can take that drift into the play especially against the left handed batsman and it won't be easy for the batsman either to hit across the wind we have noticed that the ball doesn't tend to fly much in the air if the wind is flowing against the area where you are hitting so the batsman will have to be careful with it as well definitely they will have to be careful while playing a shot against the wind so now akash tripathi and sunil bhandari they are the ones at the moment at the crease they are the ones they have to rebuild the innings after the departure of the captain they know oh, that was a quicker delivery half hearted appeal from the bowler's part but empire is uninterested it will be interesting to see and whether it is given as a leg by or runs it's been given as the runs so the ball obviously hit either the bat or the gloves that's what mr vinay kumar za believes experienced umpire vinay kumar za been in the scene for a long long period of time now more than two decades i suppose he has been in the domain of empire this time played it away towards long on vision just for a single run so when you are in the business for a longer period of time you gain a lot of experience and it counts you know in most of the crucial matches while you are you are while doing the umpiring so he has been doing a wonderful job just came back from the acc men's premier cup he was in oman for the acc men's premier cup in his international duty and umpiring the standard of umpiring in this tournament has been fantastic we have seen some close decisions but being taken very very accurately from the umpires so a huge kudos to the entire panel of umpires definitely they deserve pat on the back for the wonderful job they have been doing in this tournament this time played it away just for a single run but let me tell you umpiring is a, a thankless job you may be doing the best of the job but one mistake and the blame is put on you yeah, definitely whenever you give a good decision whenever you are spot on in the field there are very very less people who adore you who talk good about you when you do good things but as soon as you make a mistake everyone around will everyone around you will bash at you so it's a thankless job and the Tough standard job. of umpiring have been very very good here so huge kudos to them so they are through for a single run playing the ball away towards the mid down region that will end the over single to end the over 10 was gone 76 runs on the board for three down and there will be drinks break well we are through the halfway of the mark 10 overs have been bowled the game is nicely poised this is still anyone's game 77 runs lumini have done well with the run rate but then they have lost three wicket which also includes the wicket of their captain so kosi province they still have a lot to ball out in the second phase of this first inning and lumini will obviously look to score somewhere around 80 to 90 runs in the last 10 overs we'll come back shortly we'll take a short drink break as well
Welcome back once again after the short drinks break. Ten overs have been bowled. Koshi Province. They have kept Lumini Province in check in the first ten over. Now up to the ballers to close out on this inning as well. Ankit Subedi, the captain, will continue in his last over. He starts off with the wide does Ankit. At this time played obviously, but finds the gap there. Long chase for the for the fielder, but ball eventually wins the race there. Welcome boundary for Sunil. But this time loose there from Ankit Subedi and quickly pouncing upon it and driven away nicely for four runs. Picked up four runs by Sunil Bhandari. You can see once again in action replay. It was short and wide asking to be hit and Sunil rightfully does show. At this time a big sour for LBW. Sunil was trying to play it across the line. Completely missed it there. It's a good delivery from Ankit Subedi this time beating the batters. Missing it completely, hitting his pants, but no reaction from the empire. It is a very difficult angle to get an LBW for an upspinner. If there is no pitch, if there is no torn on, torn in offer from the pitch, you are operating round the wicket to a left-handed batsman means always will have to look for that torn. The ball will have to turn away from the left-handed batsman. On that occasion, it was drifting down the leg leg stump with the angle in. So very difficult to get LBW decision when you are bowling right around the wicket. Unless the ball is dead straight. So both the batters having identical score 11. And these two batters very much in the business. Trying the level best to rebuild the innings. This time played it away just for a single run. It's been a good display of bowling from Kosi province. We have to admit that. Yes, they have been poor at times with those few inconsistent deliveries. Ankit threw short and wide one to Sunil Bandari. The start of this over itself. But apart from those balls, Kosi have balled with. They have hit the right areas. And it's very important as an spinner in T20, T20 format of the game to know your spot, to know where you exactly want the batters to play. It's not only about coming and hitting everything. It's also about planning, especially when it comes to T20 cricket. Well, the conversation will go on continuing. It's 11 overs done. Lumini Province, they're 90, in fact, 86 for 3. Eighty-six for 3 and it's Dipesh Colonel who replaces Soujan Gimire from... The road end took the wicket of the opposition captain Dave Kanal in his previous over. And what a talent the pace Colonel has been for Kosi Province. Experienced campaigner has been playing for the provincial side since a long, long time now. I still remember we used to call him Warner in the local level when he hadn't played any sort of age level cricket when I was not even a commentator. Is the story of back then the little warrior now is doing a great job for the provincial side and also the Nepal under 19 side. In, in fact, both of you are doing the wonderful job. You are doing cricket commentary at the national level, international level. He played at the national level and very soon he'll be playing in the international as well. It's a very interesting story of these two blokes. I still remember the pace Colonel. He's He's a guy who can play cricket for a whole day throughout. I still remember a very young age. He used to travel kilometers in bicycle just to play matches. And he used to play not only one, two, three or even four matches in a single day. There was a weird story where he came in to play for our team. He batted. He took his bicycle, went away and went to play for another team. He batted there. Once again came and bowled for our team. <laughs> He's a crazy guy. <laughs> So 87 runs on the board. It's an interesting story of Deepesh Kandil shared by Bipul Bhatrai. Since he knows him very well from the gully cricket he used to play. Surely Kosi Province are blessed with a talent like Deepesh Kandil and I don't think, I feel that the days is not far, the days aren't that far where we will see Dibis Kerala representing Nepal national side, the international team that is. 
because he is a great asset to have a left arm spinner gun fielder and also can contribute with the bat always an handy option if you have that all round capacity this time nicely clipped off the pad by sunil vandari they were looking for the second but no second run there on offer good over from the base so far just two runs of it from the first four balls Lumbini Probe is they are trying to build the partnership but also they will have to be careful that they keep on rotating the strike not let the pressure develop around them because every dot ball that you face will build pressure on you as a batsman as well as your partner and also the players to come after you so as much as you can rotate the strike it's always a good for your side we always talk about that big hits and slam bang cricket when it comes to the T20 format this time it was drifting down the leg stump one second there's a fielder there so 88 runs on the board for lumbini definitely these two batters will have to make sure that they don't lose too many wickets and apart from that they have to keep this and you know, rotate the strike rate that's very important for them otherwise if you play too many dot balls then desperation element comes about and in desperation usually batters try to play too many fancy shots and when you try to play too many fun fancy shots there is every chance of you getting out so it's very important for them they have to rotate the strike rate that's very important yeah the rotation of a strike is one of the key key factor especially for a batsman if you want to succeed in the t20 format of the game as well yeah you should have that big hitting capacity you should have the ability where you can smack a baller at any time you wish but if you also have that anchoring capacity where you where you can clearly take 5 to 6 run per over without taking any risk then it levels up your game it levels up your game it levels up your standard it, it makes you a different quality of batsman and we've seen that in international format as well few players like virat kohli who were initially supposed by the world of cricket that yeah he's a good player but might, might not be the best when it comes to the t20 format because he doesn't hit big shots he doesn't hit big sixes right from the start but we all know where he's he in the current day even when it comes to t20 cricket or ipl cricket one of the greats of t20 cricket i would say so there are plenty of examples to learn for the batsman as well and it's important for young players to learn these things at early phase of your career so you succeed well definitely you can learn a lot of you know you can take a lot of lessons from these world class cricketers you need, as a batter you need to have the ability of you know scoring as you said scoring runs without hitting a boundary you should be able to you know, rotate the strike have the build up the ability of taking runs even during hard times bouncing down the track and the white tee the way and the ball balloons up and should be taken and yes here the hero your kadil the nepali version of david warner takes that catch Dibes Kadel makes no miss of it and Ganendra Shrestha he was called to bowl the 13th over of the inning by his captain and he delivers right in the first ball it's a big fish as well Akash Tripathi the big man has to depart trying to play towards the leg side trying to smack Ganendra in the first ball itself top is that one and it balloons up in the air and Dibes Kadel at point reason is a gun fielder we have seen that plenty of enough time with Dibes has done well in that reason one second takes a good catch the ball was in the air for a long long time but there is no meshing around if the peskardel is underneath the ball and ganendra shrestha who bowled pretty well against bagmati in the earlier fixture took two wickets yesterday starts off with a wicket in his very first ball here lumbini they are 89 for four now Well, Dilshad Ali is the new batsman, the new man in the crease, and he's here because his senior partner Akash Tripathi just got out to Ganendra Shrestha, who has come to ball his first over in the 13th over of the inning. Lumbini, they are tattering at scoreboard reading, 89 for four now. Oh, this time, poor balling from Ganendra, drifting down the leg stump. Good take from the wicket keeper. This time the ball drifting down the leg side and a good collection done by the wicket keeper jabbing and collecting the ball. Lumbini they have lost four wickets now. 90 runs on the board. Kosi Province they are 
they surely have the control in the game currently. Lumbini, they are at a stage of 90 for 4. We have seen that this has been a high scoring tournament. Runs being scored very easily. So Lumbini obviously will have to score somewhere around 160 to 170. Now the responsibility and the soldier of Sunil Vandari, Dilsad Ali. They still have battles to come like Krishna Karki, Virat Bhandari, who all can play big shot. But the need of the hour is a partnership here. Definitely, they have to build a partnership. That's very important for them. As they have many battles to come. And it's a good thinking from the captain of Koshi Province as well. He has a short mid wicket in position. You don't see that too often, especially in this format of the game. We are in the 13th over of the inning. We don't see a short mid wicket in place in the 13th over of the inning in a T20 match. But Ankit knows the opposition team is already under pressure now. There's a new batsman who is at the strike. He will obviously look to clip the ball and rotate the strike. And in order to stop that happening, he has a short mid wicket in position. One second chance of a run out, but the fielder he fails to gather the ball properly. Good stuff from Kosi Province so far. Yeah, at the moment, uh, Lumbini, at the moment, they are not being able to score runs freely. Having lost four wickets so far. And the things are not making, the bowlers are bowling to tight line in line, not allowing the batters to go away easily. Not being able to get away with them easily. Again, in the sister, he has had a good start. Two runs considered, a wicket of Akash Tripathi. Left and right in combination for Lumini Province in the middle. Sunil and Dil Saad. Dil Saad Ali, he's been in the team for quite some time now. He was also the path of Lumini Province team in the men's PM Cup. Did well for them. Batting in that lower order position. Also bowling a bit of overs in between when, whenever it was needed. And Sunil Vandari, a newcomer in the team. And talking about the young talent coming through especially in the T20 team of Lumini Province. There's a lot of tennis ball cricket played in that region. And players like Sunil Vandari, Bir Bahadur Ghar, Timogar, they have made their name playing tennis ball cricket tournament. And they have made it to the T20 side as well. This time there was a chance there. The ball was in there for a bit of time, but the fielder had sought mid-wicket. He could not gather the ball. Two runs taken to close out that over. Five runs considered by Ganyan Rosesta in the first over and also a wicket of it. After 13 overs, Lumini Province, they are 94 for 4. Thirteen overs done, Lumini Province, 94 for 4 and 13 over is the mark where usually in standard form of T20 cricket, a batting team crosses that 100 runs mark, this time trying to hit a big shot, ends up hitting straight into the hand of the fielder. Oh, the fielder makes no mistake at all and Sunil Vandari, after that simple catching practice stuff, will have to walk back. This time trying to play a big shot, not being able to get away with it, this time playing straight towards the fielder, onto the back foot, pulling it around, but not timing it, the ball balloons up, an easy catch taken at deep 
Squadak boundary region. So Sunil Bhandari departs. Wicket number five goes down for Lumbinia at this stage of the game. Sunil Bhandari, he was hitting towards the longer part of the boundary there. It's a weird scene. The batsman is coming back with both of his batting pads on his hand, but it's fine, sir. You'll have to walk back. And Sozan give it against the first wicket of the match for him. Once again, good captaincy from Ankit Subedi, bringing in his off spinner against the left handed batsman, relying on that matchup, which we talk a lot in this format of the game, especially. And Ankit knew that if the batsman has to take the risk against. My off spinner, he will have to hit it towards the longer part of the boundary, and you can notice in that dismissal, the fielder who took the catch was almost 10 to 15 yards inside the boundary line. So, a good reading done by the captain. You have to read the game and apply your strategies accordingly. And the captain bringing on his half break bowler, Saujan Kimberlin, picks up a wicket, and bowler delivering the goods for the side picked up a wicket. Virat Bhandari is the new man in, straight up in the air, but just land safe in the vacant reason. The ball is running down the slope, but good work done there. Good bit of fielding. They're coming back for the third run and they completed as well. Good running between the wicket as well. Oh, in fact, it's an overthrow there. They were, they were trying to run for that extra run. Comedy of errors. Comedy of errors, Sanjeev. Certainly saved the boundaries. Saved the single run. Good fielding there at the boundary region. Fumbling, tumbling, stopping the ball. Batters were running. And looking for the fourth run as well, but somehow the field managed disallowing the batter from taking the fourth one. They ran three runs in between that event. Virat Singh Bandari is the new batsman in. We'll have to play like the other Virat, who we are talking about a couple of overs back. Because Lumbini Province, they need a beginning here, at least from one of these two batsmen. They still have Krishna Karki to come, who can whack the ball towards the death overs. But they need to set a foundation for that as well. Definitely, these two batters will have to, you know, have build a foundation for the later of batter to play them freely. Especially talk about Krish. Krish he is the one who can use his long handle to good effect. But well, this time guided towards the third man region. Cheeky shot, clever shot. Nice thinking from the batsman. Once again, it's beautiful fielding. Kosi province. I'm pretty sure. Oh, in fact, there's a direct hit. But the batsman is safe and sound there. I thought that was a close one, Sanjeev. Because the batsman at the striker end, he was trying to take that extra run. He was trying to go for that third run there was Virat. Will have to be interesting. Will have, it will be interesting to see in the action replay if we can get that. It was a direct hit from the third man region. But that's an interesting point. Will come to know. But there was no reaction from the Empire. So the battery is very much at his crease. So no damage done. That was a terrific fielding, hitting the stumps, direct hit, and onto the back. We're trying to cut it away this time, missing it completely. So 100 run comes up for Lumbini Province in the 14th over, losing five wickets. Well, Koshi Province, I'm pretty sure Sanjeev, they have had a long meeting yesterday, and might be they got some mitigations from the coach and manager as well because they look a completely different side today. Definitely, they look different side altogether. That's the end of the over. We'll talk more. 14 overs gone. It's now Limbini. 100 runs on the board, losing 5 wickets. Fourteen overs done. Lumini Province there hundred for five. How much then case then? How much can they score in the last six overs? That will be a big big question for Lumini Province and their lower order batting. They had a pretty good start. Opener Mrinal Gurung struggled, but Dev Kanal was playing a fluent inning from one end. But after the fall of wicket, especially of the captain Dev Kanal, 
the other batsmen have come and gone nothing was done in between yeah the fluency of scoring strokes has disappeared after the departure of the captain dev khanal who was batting fluently scoring runs at his will hitting boundaries but after his down fall the innings hasn't moved the way they wanted to have in a smooth fashion at the moment they are 100 runs on the board losing five wickets 15 over in progress run the ball from here it, they, it might get them a total over at say 140 plus and i was having a brief chat with the head curator of the mulpan international cricket ground mr abdul al mamun today morning and he mentioned me that 180 should be around somewhere average par score here if you bat well it's a good batting track not much in offer for both the pacers as well as the spinners maybe if you bowl those off cutters slower balls and mix it up well as a medium pacer you might get some help from the pitch because it's a hard really hardly rolled surface and even as a spinner if you hit the right areas where are your pace then you might extract a bit of turn but not much in it almost everything in offer for the batsman you can trust the bounce you can trust the pace play off peacefully play under eyes so it's a big scoring surface here and the score that we have seen already in the tournament so far has been in clear example of it asutosh giray is scoring that big century here against gandagi province that's a wide ball drifting down like side definitely the batters who can stay at the wicket and take the ace own time can really go on to play big innings asutosh giray your back with the province scoring 101 runs coming of just 56 deliveries he was super while batting that's the only century we have seen in this tournament some more will fo- follow in the coming days as well the way the pitch is you know showing the glimpses they hear the batters can you know hit through the line today we saw the innings of captain dev khanal but he himself is to be blamed for getting out yeah they was mentioning me after their previous loss that i'll score a big run here in this tournament let's see when he does that he got a start today but failed to convert that one there you can see our pitch curator having some work on the generator at the ground there you go a very very hard working abdul al mamun let me tell you sanjeev i was here just a day prior to the start of the event it was almost 9:30 pm in the night and what was mamun doing he was still cutting the grasses making those all chase body straps all by alone tough job done he is a cool guy as well and a very you know honest and very disciplined guy no hanky panky business he is very sober when you talk to him he will not talk he will talk you with in a very even a friendly manner very jolly fellow as well very straight forward type of guy well it's been one of the best decisions that nepal cricket has taken bringing him in as a head curator here at mulpani cricket ground because we all know the state of the pitch here prior to his arrival and post his arrival have seen that this ground hosted the acc men's premier cup the world cup qualifiers few of the international series and a big part that has been played by mamun so huge kudos to him as well 15 overs done last five overs in the first inning remaining from lumini pradesh lumini province 103 for 5 Well, Dibes Karel will ball out his last over of the spell into his fourth over. A quick single taken there by Virat Vandari in the first ball itself. Dibes balled well today. 22 runs, in fact, 23 runs considered with that single. Two wickets taken. Big wicket of Dev Kanal in that. So he has done his job. He is now into his last over of his quota. Picked up a couple of wickets. 104 runs on the board for Lumbini Province now. The pace cut in. This time played it away towards the onside region and the batters will go for second run as well. It comes through. Got a hit and given out. A splendid bit of work from the fielder there. There was never ever a second run. 
direct hit and the batsman will have to walk back they were looking for that second run which was never there dil sad ali he played it with soft hand the ball was traveling towards the fielder the fielder made the run and in between while well, the batsmen were trying to take the second the direct hit it sends back the batsman now another wicket lumini province now in all sort of trouble there you can see that in the action replay the fielder came in covered his distance oh uh, that that was a good angle to throw as well he had a clear view of all three stumps and bang there you go good job good decision from the umpire as well he was clearly way way behind that popping crease direct hit was the key in terms of getting him run him run out he took his chance but pete with his wicket so another wicket goes down here at the total of 105 runs on the board for lumbini province virat bhandari is the batsman who have had to walk back after that run out it must have been hitch call because he was running to us the danger in there and he gets out while trying to steal that second run not necessary at all because you know you are already under a bit of pressure because of the wickets that have fallen prior to it there are still five overs remaining in this inning or oh, this time played cheekily towards the final leg reason a long chase for the for the fielder but the ball wins the race boundary straight away dil sad ali drifting down like sand paddle it away cheeky shot from him and collecting four important runs there was no fielder long chase for the long leg boundary long leg fielder not being able to stop the ball in the ball finding the boundary region for four runs interesting field setup as well yeah as a left arm if if a left arm spinner is operating you can expect the fine leg to be a bit square preventing that sweep shot but there's a long long gap there this time once again played towards the leg side reason chase for the fielder but the ball once again bids him and yet another boundary back to back boundary for dil sad ali blues not from dipesh kanel short of that ball enough time for dil sad ali to play the way a wide the way towards the mid wicket boundary region no chance for the fielder and the ball traveling to the fence for boundary region welcome four runs for lumbini province eight runs up two balls the pace colonel turning to be expensive in his last over of his spell stand is a fielder out there will just be a single I'm pretty sure Lumbini Province they want afford yet another run out here. Now Krishna Karki is the new batsman in. This was the action replay of the last boundary. It powerfully towards the square leg reason. There was a fielder at DP square leg, but he was a bit squarer on that occasion. It was hit with full power. The ball traveling to the fence for four runs. So that will end the. Bowling of the pace Kanel 16 was gone. Lumbini one one four runs on the board, losing six wickets after 16 overs. We are in the day number five of Bir Ganesh Man Singh National T20 Championship. This is a T20 tournament with seven provinces. big part of it and i have always talked sanjeev especially during the pm cup campaign while i was in the commentary i was always talked about the need of a tournament where there are just the seven provincial sides not the departmental teams because if there are only seven provincial sides then there's a good competition in between them because we all know the level of competition in between the provincial team and the departmental side is a bit up and down the departmental side always tend to build pressure against the provincial teams when it comes to the national tournament so in order to check where does our provincial side stand while well, they compete against each other this sort of tournaments were always need of an hour definitely i do agree with you fully agree with you and apart from the t20 format and 50 overs format we have we need to have in a longer version of the game two day three day format should also be played in which all only these seven teams should be participating Oh, I obviously do agree with it. There you go. The beautifully captured moments 
the plane it's flying high can lumbini province fly high as well or will koshi hunt them down today there's a bit of interruption in the play might be there's a bit of issue with the bat dilsad ali needs a new bat there i would have loved to see the provincial side getting the senior players who are now the part of departmental side sanjeev just for this tournament it would have been yet another fun if we could see those players who are currently playing from the departmental side they come back to their province team just for a tournament and play alongside the other young players what it does is that the young player who are the part of provincial team regularly they get to learn so much from the experienced campaigners definitely it will be learning you know session for the newcomers playing along with the established players they will be sharing the same dressing room and they will know a lot, lot of things you know from the senior players i still remember having a conversation with my colleague commentator ayush gautam and rajesh basnat during the pm cup campaign that if each and every player who are now part of the departmental side they return back to their provincial team which team would be the strongest one and we concluded with the answer being probably the so the possible province or even lumini province and madhesh province because plenty of talent have come from that region who are now representing different departmental side as well as the provincial side if you talk the team like madhesh province you will have the service of few big names like arif sheikh and asif sheikh and rashid khan anil kumar sahab pawan sarab they are regular part of madhesh province so they look a strong team unit as well and then similarly talking about the lumbini province we'll have the national captain rohit kumar powdel and few other star players similarly the far west the sudarbasim province they are a factory of cricketing talent especially when it comes to men's cricket and even women's cricket in the recent time now so definitely will really be an interesting sight to see when all the you know players playing for the respective teams that, that will certainly you know uh, be able that, that will certainly you know be a good win a position for the youngsters to learn from the established players when the established players play with them along with them for the, the respective provinces province teams in the coming days uh, we do hope that our selectors are listening or the different you know province uh, cricket association associations are listening to us they will certainly look into this point in the coming days yeah, and it's exciting time for nepal cricket as well yeah it's sad that we lost to the united arab, arab emirates yesterday denying us from that entry in the asia cup which will be played in the t20 format as well this year but if we talk about our other cricketing activities in the recent part it has grown up so highly with regular series being played for both national team and now with the introduction of nepal a side they have been playing regular cricket it's going to be an historic series just the next week when west indies a team will travel to nepal to play in five match t20 t20 series in fact against the nepal national team as a preparation for the t20 world cup so it's an exciting time for nepal cricket altogether we also have the elite trophy and interestingly the top four team from the men's pm cup were supposed to play the elite trophy and we all thought that three of those top four will be the departmental side and one spot will be upper grab among the seven provinces but the provincial team especially bagmati province and madhes province they stunned each and every one of us grabbing those two spots for the elite trophy apf misses on that one tribun army club nepal police club bagmati province and madhes province this four team will compete in the elite trophy but for now shravan yadav comes back to ball and straight away umpire vinay kumar sir has to stretch his arm because it's a no ball and a free hit it's coming so now opportunity for krishka to send the ball over the fence as you talk about the upcoming you know caribbean team coming a team coming to nepal playing for five matches it will be an interesting series for the national side in preparation for the upcoming world cup t20 world cup here we go the free ball krishna karki tries to launch that one and it just over the field of the air good hit from krishna karki it was way outside of stump plenty of room in offer for krishna karki to hit that one and the hard hand of krishna karki the pro power of krishna karki takes that ball up and over the fielder six runs to him 
Look at that. It was way, way outside of stump. Krishna literally had to face it with full stress there, but managed to get a good portion of his bat. Six runs to his name. He made room for himself and just time playing up. Ishli and the ball might be taken. No, dropped it, falling just short of the fielder, though there was a desperate attempt. The ball was in the air for a long, long time. Desperate attempt on the fielder to take that catch. Captain Ankit Suvedi, he was himself there trying to get underneath that ball. Krishna was once again trying to smack that one over the cover and ended up slicing that one. Ankit made a hard yard but could not get underneath the ball. And these are the small things, Sanjay. We talk about fitness in cricket. We talk about that extra effort that you put in the gym or in the training. I still remember one famous interview of Virat Kohli where he says fitness is that thing which takes from that good effort to a good catch. The difference between that good effort and a good catch is the extra hour of hard work that you do in the gym that you put in the fitness. Definitely, you should be physically, mentally, emotionally fit to be able to compete at the competitive level. And fitness is one of the most important aspects in any sporting event. You need to be physically, mentally fit to be able to you know take on take up the challenges surely Devendra Singh Ayri a prime example of that thing and in between Dilsad he was trying to smack yet another six but ends up hitting it straight into the hand of the fielder down at the long and boundary and he has to perish as well first wicket for Shravani Yadav and Lumini province the wicket in regular interval hasn't helped Lumini province at all Dilsad Ali he was playing well he tried to go for another big one. It was way outside of Storm, not in his hitting arc. And a clean and easy catch is taken down there at the long and boundary. Dil Sadali walks back for 17. Sravan Yadav with his first wicket and Dipesh Kadel with a simple catch once again. Lumini Province there, 1 2 6 for 7. Well, 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 Lumini Province, they were 44 for one at one stage. They had a 44 run opening partnership, in fact. And after that, it has been all Kosi Province only. Each and every baller being used by Ankit Subedi has done the job today. They have been good in the field. There suddenly have been few lapses around, but they have come back well each and every time they commit a mistake. Lumini Province, they are 1, 2, 6 for 7. It's surely not going to be enough runs on the board. Mirbahadur Gharti Mogar is the new man in and immediately he tries to play a big shot. Good fielding once again. Couple of runs coming, playing that ball officially towards the mid wicket bound region. A very good bowling performance by Lumbini Promise, let me tell you. In, I beg your pardon, Koshi in this match, Lumbini, they had a good, very good, decent start. 44 runs coming in 4.4 overs. Near literally. Nearly 10 runs per over was the start they got, but after the departure of Captain Dev Khanal, the things have now slackened down. And at the moment, Lumbini Province, they are the 128 runs on the board. The problem with Lumbini Province and their batting today has been that their top order and middle order batsmen, almost each and every batsman, they got a start, but they were failed to convert that into a big score. Captain Dev Khanal, he was out for 45, and then Akash Pripati, Sunil Vandari, Dilsad Ali. All three of them, they got a start. Akas and Sunil, they made 14 runs each. While Dilsad was out for 17. Couple of deliveries back. So the problem of the batsman failing to convert those start into a big score. It has hunted Lumbini province. This was the action replay of the last wicket. Dilsad Ali was trying to hit it over the fielder at long on region. Could not generate enough power. 18 overs have been balled. 1, 2, 8 for 7. Lumini Province.
so 128 128 runs on the board for Lumbini Province. Krishna Karki and Bir Bahadur Gharti Magar, the two batters at the crease for them. Now they just have two overs remaining. So now how many runs they are going to score in the remaining 12 deliveries, barring white balls and no balls. Fedos Ansari comes back for his third over. Oh, that ball keeping low. Well, Lumini Province, they will surely think that if they can get at least a runner ball in the next two ball ball, that will take them to 140. And Kosi Province yesterday against Bagmati, they failed badly and they were not chasing a, that big score at all. It was a similar score around 138, 140. So Lumini Province, they will surely fancy their chances that if we can score around 140, and if we ball well and field well, we still are in the game. Definitely, you have to be feeling that kind of self-belief. We can do it. And for that, these two batters will have to make sure that the remaining balls are not played in dot balls. They have to make sure that they score runs, at least if not in boundary, at least in ones and twos, so that they can have a total of right to 140 plus. Oh. Misfield there. But the batters didn't go for the second run. Satisfied with a single run. A clever ball by Firdos Ansari as well. Rolling his finger while just releasing the ball, trying to cut that pace down. Not allowing Krishna Karki to swing freely. Krishna will have to generate power by himself if he, want, if he wants to hit that big shot of Firdos. Now Virbhadur Garthi Magar, what does he do? What can he do in fact here? Will surely look to rotate the strike rather than trying to whip for a big one and missing in. That will be a good one for the team since he has just arrived and Krishna Karki is the one who is you know connecting the ball. There you can see dot ball outside the Austin going for a drive, missing it completely. So what he should be doing is try to you know nudge the ball in the gaps and go for a single and let Krishna Karki take the strike and let him do the job of hit, of scoring and like playing some big shots. Get that bat on the ball. I think that must be the clear message from Krishna Karki to Birbhadu Karthi Magar. You don't need to do anything at all. Just get bat on ball, tap it and run for a single. Oh, this time he makes a good connection. It's up in the air and it's straight into the hand of the fielder. Birvadur Gharti Magar, he made the connection, but not the kind of connection that he obviously wished to see. He hit it straight into the hand of the fielder at mid-wicket region, who takes a simple catch. Yet another wicket, eighth wicket down now. Firdos Ansari gets the wicket as well. Kosi Province, they are all over Lumbini Province. Seventh wicket to go down for Lumbini Province. They, they can see short of that ball, played it away, officially. Straight to the fielder. Nice catch taken. It was a simple catch. So another wicket goes down here. Yeah, now the thing with this inning, we can clearly notice one thing, Sanjeev, that yeah, it is a good batting surface. You can play your sorts. You can rely on the pace and bounce of the track. But it's not a track where a new batsman can come and start hitting immediately. So a set batsman, a someone who has been there for quite some time, those batsmen, they will have to take the responsibility. And it has not been the case with Lumini Province today. Yeah, that has been the case for Lumini Province. So new batter, Abish Abishish Gotham is the one. Oh, he played it one in over two stroke and the ball running down towards the third man region. There's a fielder, just a single run. So now we have strike. Krish Karki will be on strike now. The evergreen Krishna Karki has been in the scene for a long, long period of time. Started getting into the circuit. Started getting that attention right from the under-19 days where he was a very handy all-rounder. Used to ball a gentle medium pace and bat lower down the other place that under-19 World Cup in New Zealand. That was in 2012. Alongside few other names like Shagar Pun, Subhas Kakurel, Hashim Ansari. And each and every of those players who were the part of that under-19 team. Pradeep Ayri, Rahul Vishwakarma, Subhas Kakurel, Shagar Pun. They went on to play for the Nepal national team for a long, long period of time. But Krishna Karki 
had his own ups and downs in between. His career could not flourish as it was expected. But he is still there. He is still fighting there. He is still there for the passion that he carries for this game. Just now 131 for it down. The last over comes up for Lumbini Province. So Chris, Krishna Khan, he season campaigner. He has been in the national circuit for a quite number of years. Very experienced player. The passion still very much you can see in him. Very much you know passionate about this game of cricket. It's more about the passion. Passion. It's more about the obsession that he has been in the business still. And he is on strike now. So last over, he's going to take strikes. So now what he will do now? Go after each and every ball. He tried to hit too many boundaries. Played some big shots. All the fielders spread out. Long off, long on, sweeper cover, deep mid wicket. It's going to be Ganendra Srishta to ball the last over. Krishna Karki slashes that one. But lucky enough, that might well run towards the boundary. But no, good feeling there. Suddenly saved a couple of runs there. The intention was there for him to play the shot, slicing that one and the ball flying over towards the backward point region. Couple of runs for him. The good well, thing is that he's on strike now. Yeah, he's on strike now because of that two runs. And Krishna, his favorite hitting area, hitting areas obviously is towards the cover region. Long off and long on, you will fancy hitting it short in those chances. He's not someone who will slog you across the line. He normally. Loves to get into the line of the ball and he smack it either down the ground or over cover reason if any room is available. So Ganendra will have to be careful with it. This time once again wide outside of stump. He hit it powerfully. The ball went back to the stump and strike the stump. But they get two run once again. So a couple of double there. Four runs of the first two ball. 140 still gettable. So there's a... He can try to play the shirt towards the final aggression since there is no fielder. Apart from that, you can see we have you can see have fielders at deep backward point, sweeper cover, long off, long on mid wicket. So I think he should be aiming that side towards the final aggression. If he can scoop it up towards the final leg, then he can pick up a boundary. The message is clear: don't pitch it up to Krishna Karki. Ball it way outside of stump. Away from his reach. Third ball of the over. Oh, Krishna, listen to your call, Sanjeev. He was actually <laughs> trying to ramp it over the short fine leg fielder, but fails in making any sort of connection. Just a single there. It's a good thinking from Krishna Karki, trying to scoop it up towards the final leg region. In but they did not take the single. Krishna wants the strike. Yeah, it was a good thinking and it was spot on by Sanjeev as well. Because you have both third win and fine leg inside the 30 yard circle. So if you can they get that ball, then there might be an option of the boundary. Once again, slashes it, slashes it towards the cover region. Just a single now. So 136 runs on the board now. Now just two balls remaining in the innings of Lumbini province. And Abhishesh Gautam is the one who is on strike. So what he will do now, try to hit a big boundary or try to, you know, Nudge the ball and give a strike to his senior partner, Krishna Karki. I personally feel that Abhishe should still try to bring Krishna back into the strike for the last delivery of the over. But I get the inner guts that he will go for a big shot. He tries to go for a big shot but misses that one and it's been called wide. Okay. Abhishe will get yet another chance to bring Krishna back into the strike. Umpire Binay Kumarza. White ball outside the Austin trying to play a shot. Now that you can see Krishna Gargi walking up to him and giving him some piece of advice. What has to be done? Definitely he must have told him, bro, you do just nudge the ball in the gaps and let me have the strike so that I can hit a boundary. Yeah, 140 is still gettable here. They need a boundary of the last two ball or even a couple of runs and then a single of the last ball can do that. But obviously, Krishna will love to get back into the strike. He tries to scoop that one. There's a Vises Gautam and misses it completely. Not really sure why he was going for that fancy sort or the glory sort. Once again, there you can see Krishna Karke walking up to him, telling him, I told you what, to, what the job has to be done, but you didn't listen to me. So now it's up to you now. Now I want you to hit the bounty of the last ball. It was good thinking from Abhishek, but... 
he fails to execute that one another he could have just nudged it away and brought back krishna on his strike krishna karki will be out of the strike until and unless it's an illegal ball last ball of the first inning ganendra to abhishek what can abhishek do he goes for the big shot but hits it straight into the hand of the fielder at the cover region and it will just be a single so good bowling and fielding performance from koshi province after winning the toss and electing to field first they have done their job the bowlers have done their job they restrict lumbini province to 138 runs for the loss of 8 wickets in the last 20 overs now all rely upon their batsmen can they chase this today they failed to chase the similar target yesterday against bagmati province can they rectify their errors from the previous chase and come back strongly there's a batting card no one except captain dev kanal really played up to the expectation it was a beautiful inning from dev until he was batting out there 45 from 22 balls six boundaries and two huge hits apart from him almost every batsman they got they strike they got they start in fact akash tripathi getting their four in sunil vandari making 14 as well dilsad ali making 17 but no one could really capitalize on that one krishna karge towards the end mid 16 not out of 12 ball with 1 6 and talking about the bowling well koshi province they were up to the mark today each and every bowler which ankit subethi used they did the job for them it was a good work from the bowler of koshi province we'll get the bowling card shortly and we will see the detailed description there but it was a good performance after winning the toss especially sanjeev they decided to ball fast in an afternoon game you generally don't see that teams generally like to bat fast in the afternoon game they like to utilize the hard surface in the afternoon so the koshi yeah but the koshi province they challenged themselves and they did well as well there you can see the bowling analysis of koshi province for those on sani picked up a wicket he was economical just considering for 11 13 runs in his three overs and then Shravan Yadav he was a bit expensive but picked up a wicket as well and Ankit Subedi picked up a wicket and and the pitch Kanel was the one who pick, picked a couple of wickets and apart from that Sajan Ghimere Gayanda Shrestha also picking up so all the bowlers who bowled they picked up wickets and restricted the Lumbini province to a total of 138 in 20 overs so definitely it's a chaseable target and as you said they did the same mistake yesterday when they were not able to chase down the target but today we hope that they must have done the homework and they will you know be able to chase down the target so let's see so now we take a short break and when we come back in fact my colleague has to something more to say on this yeah exactly they were i, I just mentioning sanjeev that koshi province they were chasing 139 and yesterday against bagmati they felt badly in that chase but let's see what they have in the armory for today we'll leave you with the innings highlight and when we come back we will be back with the chase of koshi province can lumbini and the spinners stop koshi province or can koshi province find a new storyline for them and says 139 which they failed to uh, yesterday we'll come back shortly right up to the highlights
Welcome back everyone. We are back with the chase, Kosi Province. They were exactly chasing the same number yesterday against Bagmati Province and failed badly in that despite having a good start. This time around they are looking for their first victory. And Lumini Province, they will be trying to maintain that good run. They are on the top of the table, having four points from three matches. So it will be interesting to see how will this chase go. Mina Thapa and Ankit Subedi are the two batters out for Kosi Pro Province. And it's skipper Dev Khanal who did really well in the previous game with two wickets. is opening the balling for them. Mina Thapa's form has been the concern for Kosi Province. Need to score big. He's a powerful man, strong arm. Has been off color since quite a time. Scored a fantastic 85 in Chitwan during the Inter Province men's cricket. This time slightly shorter and will open the account with that single run. Not a big target to chase 139 runs, but still, Kosi Province fumbled. In the last game against Bangmadi Province, they had a fantastic start. I must tell you, Captain Ankit Subedi scored a 17 ball 36. And later, there was no big support from his teammates. That is why they fell 7 runs short in that match. Will definitely be eyeing a victory in this game. Ankit Subedi straight away using his wrist, opening his account. 139 runs is what Kosi need and in the commentary box I'm joined by Sanjeev Helmo. Welcome to the commentary box Sanjeev. 139 runs to win. What do you reckon? Thank you very much uh, Sanjeev and uh, good afternoon to our dear viewers on to the back foot. While uh, chasing the target these two batters will have to put up a good, uh, they need to you know, provide a good start. They have to lay the strong foundation whereupon they can on, carry on and play and go on to win the game. With, which will make the life easier for the lateral batter, batters to come to follow. So that's the first over completed. Two runs on the board for Ko Koshi Province without losing a wicket. So two runs on the board and Nirmal Gurin comes on to bowl. Straight away spin attack. Ankit Subedi and Minus Thapa, the opening pair for Koshi Province. Well then ball driven firmly, a good stop there. Certainly reducing the pace of the ball, just a single run. Good fielding there at the extra cover region. That was struck firmly. Well pitched up delivery from Nirmal Gurung. Just a single one. One gully backward point, point ex extra cover, wideish mid off. Then we have long on, then we have deep mid wicket, one at backward square leg and one at short fine leg. That's the fielding combination, combination at the moment. Outside the Austin cutting it away and taken. So first wicket goes down here, cutting it officially. Easy catch taken at the point region. So Nimal Gurung strikes here with a wicket in his very first over. And Mina Thapa's poor run continue once again. We were talking about Thapa being off color since quite a time. He's a very talented guy, but lately he has been in a poor run, was dismissed for 11 against Bangmati in the previous match. And now walks back cheaply once again. Kosi lose their first wicket. It wasn't a wicket taking delivery, let me tell you. Outside the Austin, there was a room for him to play the shot, but not being able to keep the ball down. He played straight into the hands of the fielder, Abhishek Gotham, who took that catch. 
and wicket number one goes down for Koshi Province at the total of three runs on the board and new batter who has made his way the center is Sujan Thapalia. Susan Thapalia, another talented left-handed batter, is the new man in the crease. Has been in a good form. Was a top scorer for Kosi Province in their poor men's PM Cop campaign. That earned him a spot for Nepal A side that played against Canada XI in the same ground. One wicket already. This time Susan Thapalia swinging hard. He's a, a very good swinger of the ball. Plays that slog sweep really well. Likes to wait on. He scored 32 runs in the previous match. Susan Thapalia, he made a big 100 in the BM Cup as well. So he is a batter capable of playing long innings. So today his innings will be very important for his side. The target is not a big one, let me tell you. 136 runs, gettable target, achievable target. But they need to have good partnerships. A couple of batters will have to come good with their bat. And to add on to that, Sanjeev Susan scored a century against Nepal Police Club, a departmental side with a very strong bowling lineup. Being the first on cap player to score a century against the departmental side in men's PM Cup. And the single run taken played the way. Enough time for the batters to cross over for single run. Here it was a praiseworthy performance from him. So that's the end of the over. So two overs have been bowled. Koshi Province there now. Five runs on the board, losing one wicket. In that tournament, and in meantime, Ankit Suvedi has cut that over 
backward point field for a boundary boundary to close out the over so it's 13 runs on the board losing one wicket after the completion of three overs for koshi province Now you can see the action dribbling outside, with offered outside the Ostrom, cutting it over the top of the fielder's head and the ball traveling to the fence to the point bound region for four runs. So, eight runs coming off the door of Dev Khanal, expensive over conceded by Dev Khanal, though he must have, though he should have got a wicket. So, 13 runs on the board. Current run rate seven four point three three required run rate seven point three three. So they are far below the required run rate, so they have to make sure this they, they stay within the required run required run rate. That's very important for them. Lankit Subedi and Sujan Thapalya at the crease. <coughs> they need 126 runs in the remaining 102 balls. The partnership will be key for them. They need to have a couple of good partnerships to chase down the target. That's very important. Mir Badur Gharti has come on to bowl and his first ball being played away for a single run towards the onside region. Lumini Province, they are unchanged after a win in the previous game while Kosi Province, they had one change in the playing XI. Robin Kisku sitting out and Anil Lamishani getting a chance today. So it's off, offside is packed. Fuller than delivery played it away straight towards extra cover region. It's a predominant delivery bowling towards the offside region since he has kept five, six fielders on the offside. So he'll be bowling on the off stump and compel the batter to play on the offside region. Well, in the previous game, we saw Bhagmati ballers bowling so many looseners to Ankit Subedi. That was that is why it was so easy for him to score, staying in the deep of the crease, playing those pool shots. People and me were talking about a ball ball to dismiss him. Usually struggles, the ball nipping in, hitting those pads. So, can Bir Bahadur Ghati Maga do it? That was a quicker delivery, a bit of swing as well, going for a pull shot, missing it completely. That was a terrific delivery from Bir Bahadur Ghati. Ankit Subedi trying to play that pull shot. The ball was a quicker one, a bit of swing as well. Still, you can see the wind is blowing at the ground. This place is quite peaceful. Not too many spectators on the ground. Short of length ball, pulled it away, half pulled, just for a single run. That was a short of length delivery. Bir Bahadur was in the bench for the first two games and then played one, the previous game against Karnali. And guess what he did? Two overs, nine runs conceded, and two important wickets taken. Playing his second match of the tournament. So, Ankit Subedi, keeper of Koshi Province, 
he will have the responsibility of you know leading the team from the front he has to make that his bat produces runs in this match this time playing at one thick is outside edge ball going to the gali region though there was a fielder trying to stop the ball not being able to stop the ball and the batters are through for a single run So end of the over, fourth over as well. Koshi promised they are now 16 runs on the board, losing one wicket. So once again, Dev Khanal will bowl, though he was a bit expensive in his last over. Once again, he is on attack. Oh, there was he for his appeal and given out. Sujan Thapalia going onto the back foot. The ball didn't bounce as much as what he expected. The ball keeping low, hitting his pads. Was he for his appeal from captain and the umpire raises his finger up. So Sujan Thapalia departs 4-4. Four -four. Koshi Province losing their second wicket at the tour. There you can see once again action replay. That ball kept low. And hitting his back foot. And here there you can see the umpire raising his finger up. So wicket number two goes down for Koshi Province at a total of 16 runs. So Sonu Ansari is a new batter making his way at the center. So I was talking about this venue. Upper Mulpan International Cricket Ground. Though today being official holiday, we don't see too many spectators on the ground. So Dev Khanal has picked up a wicket. He should have, he should have got a wicket in his very first over. When the ball ballooning towards the mid-off region, the fielder could not hold on to it. Narbadu Sarki was a culprit who could not hold on to the catch. Well, the captain Dev Khanal was denied of picking up a wicket in his very first over, but in this over he has picked up a wicket. So Koshi Province they are now 16 runs on the board, losing two wickets. New Sonu Ansari is a new batter at the crease. He will join his captain Ankit Subedi, and the batters are through for a single run, placing the ball in the gaps and running for a quick single. Well, Dev Kanal once again leading from the front in the bowling department as well. He's got a good amount of runs in the first inning and then a big wicket to dismiss Sujan Thapalia. We all know how danger batter he is. Has been in a good form lately. That could be a third one. And yes, it is. Look at the joy in Dev Kanal's face. Punching in the air. Gets second in this over itself. And Lumbini Probians, they are all over Kosi at the moment. So, captain getting, getting better off the opposition. Captain Ankit Subhadi departs. Played at one officially, but straight to the fielder at long on vision, who didn't do Mr. Delicans. He kept his eyes on the wall. He took the catch and then he fumbled on the ground, but he made sure that he kept his eye on the ball and took that catch. So Ankit Subedi, the captain, departs. Dev Khanal winning the battle of captain. Ankit Subedi, the opposing skipper, has to walk back for 11 runs. And Kosi Province, they are 17 for 3 after 4.4 overs.
Well, Firdos Ansari, the another experienced campaigner for Kosi province, walks out in the middle after third wicket has already fallen. Dev Kanal is a tall guy, can generate a good amount of bounce while bowling a up spin. That is what caused the trouble. Ankit Subedi was trying to play a sweep shot, was on the knees. A bit of extra bounce caused the trouble for Kusi's skipper. And what over this from skipper Dev Kanal? Just one run and two wickets taken. And guess who those two victims are? It's Ankit Subedi and Susan Thapalia. And that is the end of the over number five as well. Kosi are 17 for 3. Nirmal Gurung will ball the last over of the power play. Dev Kanal had a long chat with him before him bowling this ball. And Sony Ansari. Sonu Ansari starts with an on drive, beautiful on drive. One run for him. Sonu has been in off color. Long time he has played that winning run, a big cameo for his side. He's a big name, obviously, for his side, known for his explosive batting. But it's been quite a few times since we saw a big one from Sonu Ansari. Team Kosi will be very optimistic. They'll get one in this game. 139 runs is what they are chasing. They have a change in the batting lineup today as well. Anil Lamishane coming in for Shravan Kisku. This time comes down the track, trying to go over that extra cover fielder. Dev Kanal protecting that area. Doesn't give any chance whatsoever to run a single run there. Sundin Malgurung, he has been very impressive, very economical, picked up a wicket as well. And this time, got him away with a single run. Firdos Ansari opens his account. Koshi Province at the moment, stuttering at 19 runs on the board, losing three wickets. It's very important. The partnership is very necessary for them. But they have lost a wicket. This time, was he for a appeal, but Empire Vinay Kumarja shakes his head, says he is not out. So that's the end of the over. So now six overs gone. Koshi Provinza now 19 runs on the board, losing three wickets. Well, it was a loud appeal by the bowler in the last ball of the over. But umpire Binay Kumar is ha, straight away shaking his head. No sign of approval from him in that case. And after the first power play, Kusi are in a pitiful situation of 19 for 3. It's always difficult when you lose early wickets while chasing. 
Now you need to build a foundation and then you need to look at an equation as well. So Abhishek Gautam comes on to bowl now. Yeah. So when you lose too many wickets in the very early part of the innings, the pressure builds on the batters who come at the center. They not only have to score runs, they also have to make sure that they do not lose any more wickets. Otherwise, their problems will further deepen. So that's very important, the responsibility on these two batters' shoulders to stay there, score runs and also do not lose wickets. That's very important. They will have to play very, you know, carefully. And Avisay Skautam, he was brilliant in the previous game against Karnali. 2 for 14 in his 4 over. Has picked up at least one wicket in all three matches. I think he has got problem with hamstring pull for Sunu Ansari. I think he's in a bit of pain at the moment. Now they can say them by Himalaraj Giri calling the medical team on the field to attend on him. So the match is held up for a while. In between, the batters having soft drinks as well to quench their thirst. It's too hot here. So during so 20 runs on the board for Koshi Province. 82 balls remaining, 119 runs required to win the game. Sonu Ansari and Firdos Ansari, since both are they siblings or cousins? Since both of them are having same surnames. So my friend tells me they are not related, only the surname is same, Ansari. Sonu Ansari and Firdos Ansari. So now the match is held up for a while. So, another 119 runs required to win the game in 80, remaining 82 deliveries. There you can see the physiotherapist, nice lady. And the batter walks back to the pavilion along with the physiotherapist, Sonu Ansari. And I hope the injury is not a big one, small one, because his batting will be required for his side. Definitely a hard working lady there. Dr. Subek Chakhanka is the one doing the treatment for Firdo Sansari. He's walking back off the field. Retired hurt and BPS Colonel is the new batter walks in more trouble for Kosi Province. So, Dipesh Kandil, as our, our colleague commentator Bipul Bhattarai said, he has been known as, he used to call him David Warner. Short, height, exciting cricketer, very enthusiastic about the game of cricket. So, he walks in now. He will have to do business with his bat. He needs to score runs for his side. And let's see what he does. Going for a big shot, Sunu Ansari missing it completely outside the Austin. But there was no feet movement at all, standing tall and trying to deliver, not being able to make proper connection with the ball. The ball zipping past him straight into the hands of the wicket keeper. This time, placing the ball in the gaps and scampering for a single. Very difficult for Kusi province to recover from here on now. Three wickets lost already and one of their prime batter all round of Firdo Sansari also out of the field with that hamstring pull. So definitely more responsibility on these two batters. How they go about the business this time. He played it away towards the Long leg region and they will go for a couple of runs. So straight away, Dipesh Colonel picks, opens his account with a couple. 
He is a busy man, Deepesh Kondil. And he has been sent for the match of, you know, left hand, right hand combination also. Left handed, left handed spinner, bowling. Will have to play a supportive role to Sonu Ansari. He can go big if he want. He has been in off color for so many time now, Sonu. And it's in the end of the seventh over as well. Kosi Province are 24 for 3. Dev Khanal will bowl the last over of the day. Three overs is what he has bowled. Just given away 11 and picked up two important wickets of Susan Thapalia and skipper Ankit Subedi. So he has been through with his quota of four overs. Last over his bowling picked up a couple of wickets. He has been impressive, economical and impactful as well. Picked up a couple of wickets. Dev Khanal today excelling both in bat as well, in bowling as well. While batting he made 45 runs and now bowling picked up a couple of wickets. Now you can see he falls down. I think some problem for him. Oh my gosh, he's having problem. I think he banged on his knee that you can see. Well, while the doctor is busy treating Firdo Samsari outside the boundary rope. And other player, Dev Khanal, is down as well, holding on his knees. Busy days for the medical team there. We can see that in the replay. Sonu Ansari just tapping it and looking for that quick single. Dev Khanal was not in the mood to give away a single. Look at that there. Slips oh. away and twisted. Looks in a pain, Dev Khanal. Yeah, he twisted his ankle. He slipped and twisted his ankle. Why? So now he is having some stretching exercises from the doctor attending on him. I hope it's not a big problem. He should be okay, fine. He's a tall guy, like me, let me tell you, he has long legs. Once again, you can see the action replay there. You can see running after the ball. There he slipped. Yeah, there he twisted his ankle. Holding his knee in pain, tumbling a couple of times. There you can see he seems to be in great painful situation. A busy day for the medical team. Yeah, that's the reason why you've been roped in as a medical partner. Most of the times we see if the players don't don't get injured, then what will be? What you'll be doing then? So they need to do something to be something on the field as a medical partner. But now it seems he is okay, fine. I hope so. Okay to continue after that treatment. Kosi Province, they do need a treatment as well. 26 for 3 is what they have got. So someone has to do the treatment for the for the innings and either of these two batters and especially Dipesh Kondil who looks in good touch. He has been in business, four runs coming off three deliveries. And some of the shots he played, you know, it, it looks quite similar to what David Warner plays. And that was the reason why our colleague commented to people, but I said that he calls him David Warner. And some of his, you know, playing style is quite similar to what David Warner does. This time cutting it away straight to the field at backward point region though not for run. 
Al Kanil, he came to limelight when he was selected in the talent hunt during the 2018 Everest Premier League EPL for the Biratnagar franchise. Biratnagar Warriors. And they won the title in that year. He was part of that team. Seventy-four balls remaining. One one two runs required to win the game. Current run rate three point five two. Required run rate nine point zero eight. Certainly they will have to improve upon their scoring run rate. At run rate. They are far below the required run rate. This time applying his full face of the bat and playing the ball towards the mid long off region just for a single run. And then what a good spell this from Dev Kanal. Fourteen runs is what he has g given away so far two wickets already that single will make that 15 one ball left in his spell there was a chance of revenge because the best colonel he dismissed Dev Kanal in the early inning but not the case four runs coming from his last over 16 for 2 is what Dev Kanal has got after his four over spell Kosi Province, they are still struggling. 29 for 3 after 8 overs. Well, Krishna Karki will bowl the ninth over of the game. Very experienced campaigner, Krishna Karki. And that is what experience does. A wicket in the first ball for Krishna Karki. Comes into the attack and removes Deepesh Colonel straight away. What an introduction from the big man. So, Deepesh Colonel walks back. He was looking good, but his stay was not a longer one this time. Playing, I think, casually plays that shot officially towards the cover region. Bottom hand coming into that play. The ball ballooned up and nice catch, easy catch taken in the cover region. So another wicket goes down here. Well, the ball that was there to be driven. But the problem was the pace colonel played it in the air. Could have played it the other way else, straight to the fielder's hand. And Dev Kana, very happy captain. Look at that. Having some words with his teammates. I think he played a half-hearted shot. He should have played with full-blooded drive. But he just played it casually. That was the reason. And the ball ballooning up and straightforward catch in the cover region. So another wicket goes down here. 29 runs on the board for Koshi. So there are problems for the deepening at the moment. As you said, that the team innings need some kind of treatment. And now this new batter, Shravan Yadav, has joined Sonu Ansari. Now these two batters will have to play there. They will have to do the rescue job for the team. They are stuttering at the moment. 29 runs on the board, losing four wickets. It's very important. We haven't seen a you know, long partnership from any of them so far at the moment. So this partnership will be very important in the context of this game for Koshi province. Well, definitely more trouble for them after the departure of the left-handed Deepesh Kanel. Krishna Karki dropping shot straight away. Was a chance there. But it's the other way around. Sravan Yadav opens his account with a boundary. 
So he was on to the back when he played it away. The ball was a bit in the was in the air for a while, but the ball, you know, finding the boundary that you can see, hitting on the up there was a desperate attempt. It was a difficult one though. And the ball traveling to the backward point boundary region for four runs. So Shravan Yadav opens his account with the boundary. It was definitely a difficult one, but could have done better. There the fielder. Looks like Nirmal Gurung fielding at the gully position. Oh, once again guiding, but this time a fielder is set there. Krishna Karki has come up with a plan. Bowling a bit shorter one. Field is set for that. There is a deep point as well. Gully, short third man. And also extra cover which is inside the circle. Krishna Karki having picked up a wicket in the Zova, considered the boundary. Uh, overthrow the bowler. Krishna Karki could not collect the ball cleanly, owing to which the batters got the chance of going for a, for a single run. If you see the innings of Coach promised the innings didn't see the foolishness. They kept on losing wickets. No partnerships coming, losing wickets one after another. That has put them in this predicament situation. 34 runs on the board, losing four wickets. Well, it was the case from right from the start. They're playing those rash shots. We saw Mina Stapa casually handing a catch to the fielder and DPS Colonel. The last wicket to be fall. Also playing it casually, no foot, foot movement whatsoever at that time. That was there to be hit, I'll tell you. But no foot movement, that is why he played in the air. It was a simple catch for the fielder. This time a change in pace from Krishna Karki. That is what he's so good at. A direct hit and is given. Oh my God, Sonu Ansari can't believe. He has been given out. So quick reaction from the Empire Vinay Kumar Jha. Direct hit. Running for a run. Good pick up and throw and hitting the stumps. So another wicket goes down here for Koshi Province. So their problems further deepening at the moment. Half their side back to the pavilion. There you can see an action replay. Picks up and throws it, hitting the stumps. And the bills come off. And Empire Vinay Kumar Jha says, Yes, you are out. So another wicket goes down here. Quite dejected, Sonu Ansari walks back fact, to the pavilion. In fact, it is Shravan Yadav who is walking back because Sonu Ansari was in the strikers and he was the one who played that shot. And Shravan Yadav was running towards the danger end. Will be interesting to see again in the replay. Look at that. Nirmal Gurung, the fielder there, picked up a direct hit. Yep, bullseye. And a very good decision from. The experience Binay Kumar's high as well was very close to the stump. That is why he had a good look at it. And yes, you should leave the crease, says Binay Kumar's high. After nine overs, Kosi Province, more trouble for them. They are 36 for five. So it was Shravan Yadav who was run out, not Sunan Sari. The rectification here. So Samir Karki, the new batter at the crease, he joins Sunan Sari. Going for a big shot. The ball balloons up and taken. So another wicket goes down here. Wicket number six for Koshi Province. Samir Karki trying to play an attacking shot, not being able to. Put it away, the ball balloons up and another wicket goes down here. So at the moment, Koshi Province there, back to the ball situation. There you can see playing across the line, top edging and the ball ballooning up and easy catch at the backward square leg region. So Abhishek Gautam picks up a wicket. Well, back to back wicket. Sonu Ansari is the man walking back. 
Sixth wicket down now for Kosi Province. Was trying to play a slog sweep. Not finding a better connection with the bat. High in the air. And guess what? A simple catch for the fielder there. Six wickets down Kosi Province. Will we see the lowest score of the tournament? 81 is the lowest score so far. Tarnali will were bowled out for 81 against Lumbini. And Lumbini and now on the verge of bowling out other teams for the lowest total. This was a dismissal of Karnil playing the ball casually towards the cover region. Krishna Gargi picks up as a wicket. And the next to go was a run out of Sharon Yadav. Direct hit was a key in getting that better run out. And next to go was Sonu Ansari. There you can see playing across the line ball, ballooning up. An easy forward catch at the, deep, at the backward squad leg region. So at the moment, the players are having their drinks. It's now 36 runs on the board for the loss of six wickets for Koshi Province. Well, uh, Anil Namishane playing today's game is out in the middle. Obviously, Gautam got the first wicket in the first ball of this over. Kosi Province, they are in trouble, deep, deep trouble. 36 for 6. It, it is what the scorecard is. A bit of fumble there from Dev Khanal will be an extra run. Having a problem with his knee. And in meantime, in Oman. Nepal, they are playing a third place game against Hong Kong in the ACC Men's Premier Cup. It is also an important game because the winner of the game will qualify for the ACC Emerging Asia Cup. Five Test Nations A team will compete alongside the top three sides of ACC Men's Premier Cup. Nepal, they have won the toss against Hong Kong and have decided to bat first. They had a really bad day with the bat yesterday against UAE. That is why they crashed out from the tournament and will not be featuring in a back-to-back -back Asia Cup. Although, if they win today, they will feature in the ACC Men's Emerging Teams Asia Cup. A teams of five test playing nations alongside the top three team of this tournament will feature in that. And that will be the end of the war as well. So 10 was gone. Koshi promised now 38 runs on the board, losing six wickets.
Krishna Karki after the successful previous over comes into the bowling and starts with that cutter. There was a slower one as well beating the batter. Samir Karki going for a drive. The ball pitching outside the off stump. A bit of swing as well. Pitching on the off stump and angling away. So deep in trouble at the moment. Koshi Province. Someone has to play the role of crusader for them. Someone has to play magical knock for them. Apart from that, they need to have good partnership. That's very important for them. They are deep in trouble. They have lost too many wickets. Just 30 runs on the board for them. 139 is the target they are chasing to win the game. There you can see a required run rate has galloped up to 10.45 runs. That's a difficult one, let me tell you. That means this Koshi Province team needs a boundary in every over apart from runs as well to maintain the required run rate in every over. Things look very gloomy for them at the moment. Deep in trouble. Now they just have the tail enders to do the job. And how much you can expect from the tail enders? It is a brighter day in Mulpani, but definitely a gloomy one for Kosi province. Just 38 runs. We are already halfway through to the chase. 39 runs after that single. Six wicket. They have already lost. And Firdos Ansari also not fit. We'll have to wait if he comes out to bat or not. Only their captain and Kitsubidi made a double digit score. The rest of the batters have faltered. Manish Minash Thapa scored just a single run. Then Sujan Thapaliya dismissed her for four runs. Sonu Ansari for seven runs. Fedos Ansari retired. Retired hurt for two. Dipesh Kunil six runs. And Saraman Yadav run out for five runs. So dismal scorecard for them in this match. Onto the back, but pulled it away. But there's a protection. And the deep backwards squad like region, just a single they will get of that particular shot. Well, just two boundaries in this inning. One was hit by Ankit Subedi and the other one from the bat of Sravan Yadav. And that will close out the over number 11. Kosi Province, they are in deep, deep trouble. 40 for 6. Left-handed spinner Avises Gautam is on for the 12th over of the match. Of this chase, in fact, Anil Lamishani and Samir Karki are the two batters battling in the middle against the strong bowling lineup of Lumini Province. Dev Kanal has rotated his baller so well. So the bowlers have done an impressive job living up to the expectations of their captain, Dev Hanal. They have picked up wickets at regular in intervals. That's the reason why the health of Koshi Prabhu's innings is not in a good position at the moment. 40 runs on the board, losing six wickets. Wasifan is appealing and another wicket goes down here. Was trying to play with the cross bat, trying to sweep that one. And the left handed spinner making that angle is successful to trap him before the wicket. Wicket number seven is down. You can see in action, Dibley once again playing across the line. There you can see. And the ball hitting his pads, and there was no doubt in the minds of Empire to rule him LBW. 
that you can say he was showing his bat. But I don't think so. He played it and the ball hitting his pads. So what happens when you try to play across the line? You become vulnerable for getting LB double decisions. And this what happened here. So that was a terrific delivery, playing across the line and paying the penalty, plumb in front of the wicket. So I was talking about when you, tr when you play across the line, you become vulnerable for LBW decisions. If you miss, the ball will hit the pads. And Empire had no hesitation in ruling him LBW out. So wicket number seven goes down for Skoshi Province at the total of 40 runs. Well, it's almost over for them, we can say, but how long it will take for Lumini Province to bowl them out or will Kosi Province tackle them till the end? It is a thing to see, time will tell definitely. Once again, tossing that up in the air, generating that turn, going away from the right-handed batter. Trouble all the way for Kosi Province. Maybe she's got them, has been impressive, picked up the second wicket. Conceding just seven runs, he has been miser in terms of conceding runs, picking up wickets as well. He has been bowling within his limitations, not trying too much, maintaining tight line length, picking a wicket, denying the batters from hitting too many boundaries. Batters are not being able to get him away easily. This time, quicker one onto the back foot, and the ball going towards the backward square leg region just for a single run. So single to end the over. So 12 was gone. It's now 40. One runs on the board, losing seven wickets. Well, Krishna Karki used to ball two during the middle overs and then two in the death overs, but the captain Dev Kanal has decided to continue his bowling, is dealing with those slower balls. So, captain Dev Kanal will be pretty happy with the performances of his players and his bowlers in this game, restricting the Koshi province. Currently at 41 runs on the board, seven wickets have gone down. Sparsely number of spectators on the ground are watching this game. The first edition of Beer Ganesh Man Singh T20 Championship. Beer Ganesh Man Singh, the father of democracy, the Iron Man, he has been known in this part of the world. And currently, Krishna Karki is the Iron Man for Lumini Province, dealing with those slower balls, making life difficult of Kosi Province, not give, giving any width, not giving any charms for the batter. Very economical. Once again, a slower one was the back of the hand slower ball, targeting that stump, assuming that the batter will go big. But it's the other way around. The batter just defends it and will take a single run. Required run rate has gone up more than 30 runs per over. It's going to be a very difficult proposition for Koshi Province. Now only talent is at the crease for them to do the job. And this time one of the backward pulling it away. And this time a welcome boundary towards the deep backward square leg region. So after a long time a boundary has been struck by the Koshi province batters. This time Sergeant Kimiri, short of length ball onto the back, pulling it around. 
no chance for the deep squad like fielder there you can see the ball placing in the gaps no chance for the fielder what he could do was go and fetch the ball back well krishna kaki was dealing with the slower balls and that was a surprised bouncer but still sozan gimire was in a good position to play that hook shot welcome boundary how long it took for kusi province to score a boundary only a third one of the inning and once again a slower one the back of the hand slower ball not giving any pace at all six runs from that over after 13 over kusi province are 47 for 7 Abhishek Gautam has come on now for his fourth over, the last one from his quota. How economical he has been! Just eight runs conceded from three overs, also two wickets to his name. So he has been impressive in his bowling. Picked up a couple of wickets. He is into his fourth over, conceding just nine runs and picked up a couple of wickets. Sikoshi Province at the moment struggling at the moment 48 runs on the board losing seven wickets long long way to go someone has to play out of the blue innings for his side for the side to win this game at the moment the chips are down for Koshi Province and this time ball running towards the Tatmin region and a couple of runs and we have to wait for the umpire signal it's a wide so three runs to the team's total very important runs the batters are struggling to score that is why bowler have decided to give away some extra runs three extras has been in fact that was the first extra run because two they took while running and one was from wide three extra runs for the first one in the second inning and swept it away for a single run towards the deep backwards one leg region so runs are coming in the form of singles uh, scoring the runs in the form of singles will not help their cause the required run rate has gone, gone up more than 14 runs per delhi can see nearly 14 runs 13.38 so they need couple of boundaries in every over apart from ones and twos once again a sloppy work there from Dev Kanal, will it be more? No. Nirmal Gurung has already affected one run out. That to send back Shravan Yadav, who was in fact the most comfortable looking batter in the middle. Good cricket this time around. knew there was no fielder that is why tapped her head came in the front foot and he still stealing that single run it's a good running between the wickets by these two bat batters placing the ball in the gaps in front of the fielder and running quickly but let me tell you singles will not help their cause they need to play some big shots they need to play some score some big boundaries that's the only way they can go on to reach the target stopping done but better was well within the crease so no damage done so 14 overs gone it's now 55 runs on the board losing seven wickets for koshi province
Nirmal Guru impressive in his two overs. Also affected one run out. Run out we were talking about of Sarvan Yadav. 55 runs. Seven wickets down. Will that be the eighth one? A sick of a head from umpire Himal Raj Giri at that time. Will not be an eighth one. It was a quicker delivery. Caught the batter onto the back foot. But the ball may have been going down the leg side. That is the, re that is the reason why he was saved. No reaction from the umpire. This time making himself a room and playing that shot just for a single run. He was trying to go over the cover. Cover reason is vacant there. There is a deep point in place and one in deep extra cover. In fact, there is one man in extra cover. A gap in deep point, in fact. This time, plenty the way towards the back west corner collision for a single one. So at the moment, runs are coming in the form of singles. So 58 runs on the board for Koshi Province. 33 balls remaining, 81 runs required to win the game. Well, things are not looking good for Kosi Province at the moment. This time a loud appeal once again. And guess what? Things are not looking good for Nepal in Oman as well. They have lost their second wicket. Kusal Burtil once again being dismissed for a duck. And then Sumpal Kami promoted to number three. Has walked back. Nepal, they are 16 for two in the third over. However, we are in Mulpani and Kosi province. They are in more trouble at the moment. They are chasing a target of 139. And guess what? They are 58 for 7 after 15 overs. So, Bir Bahadur Ghati Magar will come on to bowl. He was thrifty in his first over, conceding just three runs. And on to the back, repelling that one officially. The ball dropping in the no man's land. Misfield there, and the batters will go for the second. No, they are satisfied with a single run. Playing a pull shot, the ball ballooning up, but the ball dropping in the no man's land. The, bat, the fielder at long leg is. Standing on the edge of the boundary region, so there was no chance of catch. Once again, played it away towards the long leg region for a single run. Though these batters are trying to hit big shots, it's not coming. Runs are coming in the form of ones and twos that will not help them. They need to play some big shots, need to play some, score some boundaries, fours and sixes. That's the only way, only way they can go on to chase down the target. They're seven down, let me tell you. 
It's a quicker delivery, drifting down the leg side. That's a wide ball. This time, Birbadur Garthi trying to bowl a quicker delivery, but not being able to control his line. The ball drifting down the leg side, pitching on the leg stem and going further away. So, extra run for Kochi Province. 28 balls remaining, 78 runs required to win the game. It's a Herculean task for them. This time, trying to scoop it towards the final equation. Drifting down leg side, it's a wide ball that you can see. Empire Binay Kumar Jha talking to the skipper. And saying the ball was going down like side, so that is the reason why it's been called wide ball. And this time, plays up Ishli straight over the top of the bowler's head. Once again, the ball dropping in the no man's land. Captain Dev Kanal does the fielding. Well, they have struggled to score a run as well, and Lumini Province. All of a sudden now, they have failed to take a wicket as well. This time a very good shot playing with the field, Samir Kharki. And that is the maximum first one of this inning. Beer Bahadur Gharti Magar. Expensive in this over. Look at that, was a full toss. Was already... Coming down the track, made that full toss and clipping that over the mid-wicket region for a six. First one of this inning coming from the bat of Samir Karki. They need to hit more like those. That's the only way. And the required run rate at the moment is, it has gone up to 16.15 runs per over. They have to score. Once again down the track and whacked it away. Desperate attempt from the fielder to stop the ball. And the batter's coming back for a couple of runs. Thirty-one runs. Partnership for the eighth wicket, the highest in this game for Kosi Provians. So a question, 25 balls, remaining 68 runs required to win the game. Can they do it? This time flicked away. There is a chance at mid-wicket reason and will go over the field for six runs. Oh, what a over this for Kosi. 13 runs already came and six runs in the last ball means 19 runs from the over number 16. Look at that. Once again, taking those few steps ahead and clipping that using his wrist going over the fielder for another maximum samir karki can he produce a miracle for his side 24 balls 62 runs needed the first big over for kosi province they need plenty of those after 16 over kosi has 77 for seven So last over yielding 19 runs, they need to have that kind of overs, productive overs, all the remaining overs to chase down the target. The boundaries have to flow now for Koshi province, like the same what happened in the previous over when they collected 19 runs. Was he for his uphill ball, but the ball was drifting down leg side. Clearly, you can see all the stumps, so there was no question of, you know, asking for the double decision. And Bar was quite right, and not accepting the plea of the bowler. He was pleading for the W, but Empire negatived his appeal. Every dot ball will increase the required run rate. There you can see shuffling here and there, and this time bangs it away. 
straight to the field just for a single run. So Samir Kharki is the one who is showing his urgency in terms of scoring. Right into the block hole. Chance for an out, but the wicketkeeper missed it completely. The batter was no one in the frame. Well, the, well, the keeper, he had all the time in the world to hit that stump, but he misses out on that. A chance when missing would have been an eighth wicket for them. Just two runs have come in this over. We saw 19 runs in the previous over. This time, very quick, Nirmal Gurung. Sauzan Gimire trying to play that cut shot, just trying to play very late. But the pace of the ball, Nirmal, ball, not giving him to do so. This time, flicked away. Sauzan Gimire, he will take the strike. Just three runs from this over. A good one for Lumini Province. We see there 80 for 7 after 17. They need 89 more runs from the remaining 18 balls. Well, Nirmal Gurung, he ended his spell after that over, just 11 runs from 4 overs. What a clinical bowling display from the left arm bowler. And guess what, Narvadur Sarge has been introduced for the first time in this game. He will be bowling the 18th over of the match, was sent to bat at number 3. Is away towards the short final leg, and the batter is running for a single run. So, Lord Badru Sarki comes on to bowl. The 18th tour of the innings of Koshi Province. Samir Karki now the man on strike. He is using the long handle when he's going to get nudging runs. Now, he will have to do the same job. Now, he will have to double more than. Here you can see 20.47 runs required per over. So we, he will have to do the replication job. What what he did when he collected 19 runs. So he is a man who looks at the moment very much in flow, in rhythm in terms of hitting boundaries. He will definitely go for a big one. A loud appeal. No sign of approval from umpire Vinay Kumar Zadia. What was you? What was he appealing for? So what was he appealing for? Ball was clearly going down the leg side. Samir Karki, the man on strike. He scored few sixes in the previous over. In fact, the one ball by the pace bowler. Not the spinner. This time comes down the track once again. And will be an easy cast for Dev Khanal. Captain Dev Khanal will not miss those. Kosi Province, they have lost their eighth wicket. He had to play the shot, but this time not being able to clear the fielder. Tall man, Captain Dev Khanal, accepting that catch gleefully. So wicket number eight goes down. Exactly, that was obvious because you can't just stay in the crease playing those single and doubles while the run rate is going up and up. Samir Karki smacked two sixes and has been dismissed for 23 runs. Narbahadur Sarki gets a fast wicket 
a good simple cast for Dev Kanal at long off. Kosi Province there 81 for 8 after 17.3 overs. So 81 runs on the board for Koshi Province, 15 balls remaining, 58 runs required to win the game. It will be too much of asking from these talenters in the context of this game. They will really have to play out of their skins to emerge as a winner in this game. It will be too much of asking, but, uh, but as we have been seeing every now and then, miracles do happen, you never know. And a proper number 11 shot there from Ganendra Sreshta. Trying to play the caught shot. Beaten by the pace of Narvad Rusalki. That was a quicker delivery, delivery from Narvad Rusalki. Ganendra switching his bat, but no connection with the ball. Only the talenters left in the innings of Koshi Province now. This time onto the backward, played it away straight to the fielder, although they will get a single run. A big applause from the dugout after again in the stress of playing that shot and taking a single run. I mean, he played the proper cricketing shot, you know coming onto the back and playing from the middle part of the bat. That was the reason why he got applause from his teammates from the dugout. Well, Firdos Ansari walked out of the field and will be interesting to see will he come out to bat if this wicket falls. And in meantime, a single taken in the last ball of the over. That means Sozan Gimire, he will Take a strike. Just two overs remaining in the game. Kosi Province there 83 for 8 and need 56 runs more. So Koshi Province, they are now 83 runs on the board, losing 8 wickets. And Krishna Karki comes around to board his last over. He has been economical and effective as well. Picked up a wicket, conceding just 15 runs. So he'll be bowling the penultimate over of the innings of Koshi Province, 19th over. Slower one once again. He has been bowling quite a number of you know, slower deliveries. And it has worked tremendously for him. Krishna Karki, he has been in the national circuit. For over the years, getting tremendous experience. Once again, a slower one this time, outside the Austin. So Krishna Karki, toying with the batter's mindset. Brilliant pace bowler, bowling slower once, confusing the batter for the pace. And he was beaten all ends up. Saujan Ghimiri, the man on strike at the moment. 14 runs he has scored, coming off 21 deliveries. This time manages to play the ball, put it away towards the sweeper cover region, just for a single run.
on to the back foot playing an evasive pull shot and just a single run so now the players are just going through the emotions it's all curtains for Koshi province talking in the true sense of the outcome of this match It balls remaining 54 runs required to win the game. For Lumini, for Lumini Province, they are at the top of the table, having four points from three matches, and they will stay on top after this game as well. Because only a confirmation, official confirmation needed for Lumini's victory. They are followed by Bagmudi province and Madhes province with 4 points each from 3 match itself. Once again a slower one taking pace of the ball. Krishna Karki good spell from him as well. 18 runs for 1 wicket after 4 overs. One last over remaining in this chase. It's all, it's all over for Koshi province. They need 53 runs. To win from the last over. So last over comes up now. It's all over for Koshi province. They are just going through the emotions at the moment. Definitely Koshi province will have to do a lot of soul searching when they go back to their hotel and try to find out what has to be done in the remaining matches to put up better performances. This time onto the back foot appealing and give one out. So wicket number nine goes down. And what is it? The retired player will come out to bat. Yeah, so he will come out. So nine wickets have gone down. There you can see in action replay. Shot of that ball trying to pull it away. The ball nicking the bat and straight into the hands of the wicket keeper. So wicket number nine goes down for Koshi province. So Ansari comes back for those Ansari. Too bad it seems he's okay, fine. He got injured when he got retired. Now he comes at the center. Just two bo four balls remaining in the innings. Now you can see on screen, Vinay Kumar Jha. But I don't think he is fully fit. He is that you can see. He's not fully fit. I don't think so. He will go for runs. Instead, he will try to play too many in the big shots. And play it away. And the ball going down towards the Tudman region. So this I was talking about, they didn't go for the run since he has problem with his foot that you can see. He has not been able to, you know, to walk freely.
This time he plays up Ishli towards the cover region and the ball will go towards the cover bound region. The third man fielder comes, he does the fielding. And just a single run. So now just three balls, two balls remaining. And tomorrow we have two matches coming up in the morning. Koshi will take on Sudhir Pashim. And in the daytime it will be the match between Karnali versus Madesh. That's the game schedule fixture for tomorrow for tomorrow. Oh, this time the ball goes up. It's a no ball. I think it slipped from the hands of the bowler running out the batter. And that's the end of the innings. So Koshi province bundle out. That's a convincing victory for Well, what a dramatic ending to the match. Bowler going for that back of the hand slower ball slipping out of his hand and was called as the no ball and look at that a run out to end the inning from Narvahadur Sarki Kusi province they have been bowled out for just 88 runs a big defeat for them Lumini province and Dev Khanal especially would be very happy look at that shaking hand with the umpires a convincing victory for Lumini province they have maintained themselves at the top of the table. Six points is what they have got after four matches. There you can see in the players on the field sharing some light moments, congratulating each other. And now they will come off the field a convincing victory for Lumini. So they stay at the top of the table with six points, followed by Bagmati and Madesh Promise. There you can see the scenic view of this ground. Wonderful scene. You can see the mountains, trees, greenery. Quiet, please. Kosi Province, they managed to surpass. The lowest score of the tournament so far, 81. Kornali province will bowl out for 81 against, against Lumini province. And today, Lumini province themselves have bowled out Kosi for just 88 runs. Lumini province winning by 50 runs. That's a good margin of victory, winning the game by 50 runs. Lumini province, that will certainly boost up their net 100 as well apart from the six points they have that's the scorecard for you koshi province not a good total to read on bundle out for 88 runs in 19.4 hours there were there was only down the order samir karki who could stay there and score 23 runs next top scorer for them was saujan gimire the tail enders scoring 16 runs there were no substantial partnerships for any of the wickets and that derailed their innings and eventually they were bundled out for just 88 runs, losing the game by a big margin of 50 runs. And there is the bowling card. All good in this one. Only Bir Bahadur Ghati Magar going wicketless after his two overs. Dev Kanal brilliant, 16 for two. And Abhishek Gautam, the left arm spinner with the same figure. 16 for 2 is what he got. Narbahadur Sarki got 2 wickets as well. Nirmal Gurung and Krishna Karki, 1 wicket apiece. 8 extras considered by Lumini Bowlers. And look at the fall of wickets. That's the match summary. Lumini Province, they made 138 runs, losing 8 wickets. Top scorer for them. The captain, Dev Kanal, chipped in with 45 runs coming in. 22 deliveries. And Dil Shah Dali made 17 and Krishna Kalki 16 runs. And Dipesh Kandil was a pick amongst the bowlers for Koshi, picked up two wickets, followed by Fridos Ansari, one wicket, and Sharon Yadav, one wicket, conceding 36 runs in three overs. And later on, when Koshi province came out, chasing the target of 139 runs to win the game, they were not up to the mark as they kept on losing wickets. 
and apart from Samir, Samir Karki, who wielded his bat to some good if, effect, scoring 23 runs, Saujan Ghimere 16 runs, and Ankit Subedi 11 runs, none of the batters could, you know, measure up the bowling attack of the opposition side, and they were restricted to 88 runs, losing 10 over, or before they were bundled out in 19.4 overs, losing the game by a big margin of 50 runs. So it's a convincing victory for Lumbini. Uh, that's the news uh, from Upper International Mulpani Cricket Ground uh, that Lumbini Province they have defeated Koshi Province by a huge margin of 50 runs. We take a short break and when we come back we shall have the post-match presentation shortly. Keep watching Customer Jib Television.
वेलकम टू द पोस्ट मैच प्रेजेंटेशन बिटवीन द मैच अफ कोशी प्रोविन्स एंड लुम्बिनी प्रोविन्स प्रतियोगिता को पांचों दिन आज दसों खेल में लुम्बिनी ने कोशी में पचास रन को शानदार जीत दर्ता कर सफल पेलो बैटिंग को निम्त पाए लुम्बिनी ने एक सौ अड़तीस रन बना थी जवाफी बैटिंग में उतरे कोशी मात्र अठासी रन में नहीं समेट थी लुम्बिनी को यह तेसरो जीत भी हो रंक का साथ लुम्बिनी शीर्ष स्थान में यथावत रहे रोस्ट मैच प्रेजेंटेशन में ये बेला प्लेयर अफ द मैच अवार्ड प्रदान करने बेला भैस रज सो अवार्ड प्रदान करना को हमीसंग हो गेस्ट पवन पंत सर मैनेजर अफ मारुति सीमेंट सला यहाँ अगाड़ी निम्त्या चाहूँ म एंड द प्लेयर अफ द मैच अफ टूडेज गेम विदउट एनी डाउट देव खनाल Brilliant performance once again from Deb. A complete all-round performance. 45 runs with the bat and two wickets with the ball. Please, a check for Deb as well. Thank you, sir. Deb, song of Thori, kura kani gona chaanju. देव लगातार दुई खेल में दुई प्लेयर अफ द मैच अभी दुईवटा जीत बनी टोली को लगी कति को खुशी हो यो पर्फर्मेस पर्फर्मेस वाइज अलग हेप्पी नहीं छून अब मैन अफ द मैच भाई टीम जित्न पर्यटन फर्स्ट अफ अल तो जो भी मैन अफ द मैच भाई अभी मोस्ट इंपोर्टेन्ट पार्ट हमी सब को एट है तो एम छोटे मतलब टूर्नामेंट में लास्टसम जानी एटलिस्ट फाइनल खेलने क्योंकि धे भैस लुम्बिनी ने कभी फाइनल नखेले सो सबजा पम्डअप तो अभी एकदम राम माइंड सेट में बॉलिंग को मा अलग धे वर्कआउट कर पचिल खेल में चार ओवरक स्पेल कर दुई विकेट आज भी सेम के बॉलिंग को बारे थोड़े भन्दि वर्कआउट तो कहीं कर अब जिस अब कैम सैम को बेला बॉलिंग फाल रहा हो बिच बिच में अस्त मेहनत चाहिए तस्त धेन ते मेन्टालिटी चाहिए रेडी छू है के बल फाल रहा हो कहीं सो बॉलिंग में चाहे हेप्पी छू कि म डिवर कर रहा छूँ आपको टीम को लगी तो दुई तीन ओवर या चार ओवर भनम न क्रुशल विकेट्स आई रह Lumini at the top. More good luck to you going ahead. Thank you, sir. So that's all from the post-match presentation of this match. We will come back to again tomorrow with more exciting game. Till then, goodbye and keep watching Kastamandav Gold.